What's happening? What's happening? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Funk Music with Zach live right here on IBM.TV, Facebook, YouTube. Y'all can catch us on all the outlets. How y'all doing out there today? Yo, in case y'all wanted to know, um, that theme was written by Mr. Kyle Willis. All right. Mr. Kyle Willis, produced by Mr. Kevin Harrington um, on John Groovalicious, his new project, The Groovalicious Thing. That theme is funky, man. And and they they wrote that for the album. But um, when I had John on and we was talking about it and then he texted me a few days later and said, man, you know, um, if you want to use this for your theme. Man, and I said, ah, are you crazy? Yeah, for sure. For sure. You know, as funky as hell. Right. Anyway. Funk Music with Zach. Today, we got a special show. We're going to be chopping it up a little bit different. And again, thank you to all the fans out there and everybody that sticks with us, hangs with us. Again, my man behind the glass, none other than blues man, Mr. Mark Lee, back there doing my production. Check out his shows on IBM.TV on Monday. And also, The Juke Joint on Thursdays. Go to Mark's website and check out all his good stuff that he's doing. Um, And Everything we do is about peace and love. Today, we chopping it up a little different. Hello to all the Funk fans out there tuning in around the world. Um, we, we're going to have a little bit of a, a, a plethora today. Um, you know, I got my man in a minute, Bill Tresvet, um, Washington National Consultant, um, a DC man, because um, I just want to ask him some questions. And, you know, I just want to kick it a little bit. Obviously, we know what's going on. And I want to talk a little bit about voting and, and how we got to do that. So that's what our show is going to kind of be about today. We're going to keep it positive. We ain't going negative. We never go low. We just go high, shoot it up. I'd like to give a shout out to Keepers of the Funk. I finally got your new music, man. Yo, 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 yo. That's all. That's all good, man. Thank you. Thank you, Keepers of the Funk. Michael Gidon Brown and his crew um, and Otis Hawk. Thank you so much. And also Otis and, and, and Donna and Afterglow. Um, I got to show you what I'm wearing today. Um, my toast to the boogie shirt, you know, um, that was so amazing. Um, and, and you can see I'm rocking that shirt today. Where's the camera? Like right, right there. Toast to the boogie. Oh, there we go. Right there. Toast to the boogie, y'all. <laughs> so, yeah, I want to make sure we, we we give peace and love. And go out and support these people. Afterglow, 92416. Um, go out and get on, you know, Next Exit stuff and check it out, man. We got to support each other. That's what life is about. Beautiful peace and love. I love all y'all out there. Thank you for tuning in. Um, and before we get started with, with, with our little political commentary today, um, mad shouts to Bootsy Collins. We got his birthday bash coming up October 23rd. All right. You can get tickets for at $25. I mean, you can get tickets for $10. You can get tickets for $30. And you can get tickets for $60. Each ticket level has a different ticket price and different things that you get, different swags. Um, you can go to BootsyCollins.com. Com. You can go clubfunketeers.com um, to join us. I'm a Club Funketeer ambassador. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Bootsy. $25 annual membership. The power of the one is the essence of all that is and ever was. That includes you and all you do. That's the mantra. Bootsy Collins, Peppermint Patty. I love y'all, man. So keep it real. And we're going to be running this video right now before we get started. Bootsy Collins, Mark, you back there. Give us the power of the one. Yeah, yeah. I love this. Thank you. 
That's some powerful stuff right there. The power of the one. <laughs> and we're going to be closing our show with that, too. Um, you know, and as we get closer to Bootsy, Bootsy's birthday bash, you'll be seeing that video and getting more information about that. Don't forget, October 23rd, go online, get your tickets. Um, they're going hot. And the proceeds of that for his birthday party goes to Music Cares, Bootsy Collins Foundation. Um you know, just to help out a lot of musicians and a lot of people um, in that end of it, roadies and, and people like that, that have been put out of work due to COVID. I got my man coming on, Bill Tresvet, um, you know, and, and I'm going to have my man Mark Lee pop in, you know, just to keep us posted on what's happening with that. Uh, Mark, man, how about that video, bro? <laughs> oh, man, that video is right. It was just amazing and all that. You will be glad to know that Bill is in the house, so we can bring Bill in whenever you're ready. But that video was just like slamming. I'm just over here dancing and jamming every time you put that on. So all I got to say is that, uh, you know, that's a great group. That's an amazing man. And, you know, as I've told you before, uh, he shares his birthday with somebody very important to me, which is my younger brother. So, yeah, you know, yeah, you told that me. October 26th energy. So definitely yeah. got to give Malik a shout out for having a birthday along with the great and legendary Bootsy Collins. So <laughs> hey, yo, what I got to say is Bootsy is just an amazing man. But if you're ready, I'm ready to bring in Bill. Hey, so, hey, hey, you got, you got time to come back a little later with us and hang out with us with me and Bill? You got time? Yeah, I definitely got time to do yeah, that. I would love right. to do that. I'll let you know, man. Pop back in with us, man, so we can chop it up a little bit. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, right here. Now, I'm going to pop out and bring Bill in. Do that, man. That's all good. My man, my producer back there, the man behind the glass, blues bland down here, Um, you know, got his own show, Mark Lee, on Mondays on IBM.TV. You know, also go check out his thing that he does called the Juke Joint. Um, And you can find that on his website. And, you know, he does a radio show broadcast. The man knows everything there is to know about blues. Right now. To this stage, to the screen, my brother from another mother, Mr. Bill Tresvant, um, my White House correspondent, brother. So good to see you. I have I have nothing but 
uplifting, positive vibes for you today. I know this is short notice, but and I know you've been busy and, and God bless you. Um, but I had to get you because there's things that and nothing bad that I just want to kick it with people about. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, my man, Bill Tresvan, man, how you doing, brother? I'm doing all right. And listen, I, I, I'm i feeling it over here. I mean, don't mind me. I might be busy, but that doesn't mean I don't know where I came from, where I'm going, and how, how many people we can bring along with us. Hey, I like that. I like that. that. And, you know, listen, uh, just, just to let you know, first, you know, uh, I'm a big Buffalo Bills fan. Uh-huh. And because of all that stuff that happened with the uh, Patriots, they, yeah. they got rid of them, and so then they moved the Bills game to 4 o'clock. Right? Oh, okay. Which means I got all the time. So what what happened though? Because I haven't been following this week. I know teams. Oh, got, no, no, what, what happened? The Buffalo Bills are three and zero. We're top of our division. Oh yeah, that I know because I'm a Jets fan. So believe me, you're standing <laughs> on my shoulders. <laughs> All right, then, then I'm feeling good. <laughs> believe yeah. me, and that's what we're at there. We're there to hold the bottom of the division up. People don't know our place. Believe yeah. me. Long, I had Jet season tickets. Been a Jets fan since '68, brother. We are only there to hold you up. So we're no. doing our job. Just like we're supposed to. We're last. You know, you do have the Super Bowl. I mean, we don't have any, but. We got the, yeah, but you went to four. Yeah, I'll <laughs> take that. And I rooted for you every time. Trust me, I yeah. did. Trust me, I did. Because so, you're, well, you're the only real New York team, technically. I, well, no, I didn't want to rub that in. Because, I mean, New York, I mean, New York, you got two. And so. Uh, yeah, but they're in Jersey. You're actually in New York, the state. So, I, hey, I root for the Bills. I, like I said, I always root for you. Um, I love them, man. So, so, you know, I mean, what time it was. I mean, they were supposed to play at 1. And at 1, I was like, hey, you know, I mean, uh, 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 all week long I'm free. But, you know, Sunday, game day, you know, I got my jersey and everything. Hey, but yeah, man. But hang on. Now they're at, they're, they're at 4. I got all time in the world. Good. That's good, man. That's good. So, so no, no, I got a surprise for you because, I mean, it's my first time on your show. And I didn't want to make you, uh, you know, you or your viewers think that I was all stiff. No, nah, man. Nah, we, we know you because we can see right now you you rocking the Morris Day clean. That's how clean you are. You 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 and Morris Day are up there with the time, and and you 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 always clean. And I got to give you props for that. You know, well dressed black man in the political fields of the world today doing what you do. You know, um, you clean, brother. I got to give you that. Oh, Lord, I appreciate that, and I'm feeling the love, and I'm sending the love back. I want to say two things though for our audience. <laughs> I got my piano right over here, and I got my horn on my lap. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't know. See, you holding out on me. I know. I mean, you know, I can't be messing around with it. Just everybody. Yeah, hey, hey. I'm, and I'm, I'm honored you're even showing me that. So we're going we gonna to talk about that privately and get into some of that. Well, I'm going to talk about everything I got, uh, everything our, our audience might need, any questions that they may have. They're going to be asking questions on the thing. We're interactive on this, right? Well, they might be. But basically, you know, I'm going to kick it with you a little bit because I have some things that I know you, you would have. See, I, I basically today, did, and this was a spur of the moment thing, because of the climate we're in, I yeah. wanted to give the thing with the live bands a break. Um, you know, yesterday I had my, my, my friend on, my brother, Gabe Gonzalez, P-Funk drummer, and we talked about the music thing. But today, I, we, you, I, us, IBM, Dot TV, all of us, you know, we owe it to our fans mm -hmm. and our, our, our followers to kind of explain some of the things that you and I may see. Um, just on 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 the on the tip of educating, like for instance, you know, um, I don't know if you heard down here in North Carolina, and you can you can um, clarify this for me. Um, they did not fill out the ballots right, and some of them got tossed back, and it was because they weren't signed and witness. Now, in my opinion, that's a basic thing we need to know. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And 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 I'm asking you. As a political um, guru, why don't we know these things? Okay, there, there, there are really three different reasons, uh, roughly, and I'll just kind of go in order. Yeah, you do you. Okay, uh, first, uh, we don't normally vote in by by mail ballot, and I, when I say we, I mean we as a nation, but I also mean we as a community. I mean, normally uh, in, in past elections, what's gone on, and I've worked in on the Democratic side, uh, we start with early voting by going through our churches and then, uh, you know, through our civic groups and then through um, 
you know, after school and PTA meetings, and we all go down and we early vote and we vote in person because that's how we've traditionally done things. Uh, this year, because of uh, the COVID, we've got to switch over to mail ballots. And mail ballot, mail and ballots can be kind of confusing because you don't know. And I can tell you this, just for the audience's sake. Um, the first time, and I voted by mail and ballot once when I was out uh, on a on a campaign trail and I had to vote back in New York. And so I sent in for my uh, absentee ballot and I got it. And, you know, I'm an attorney. And when I first got it, I was a little nervous about filling it out. And I didn't know because it had a whole bunch of instructions on it. And at first I was kind of confused about reading the instructions and making sure I had signed the right way or uh, put it in the right envelope and returned it all together. And so when we suddenly find ourselves not having done this before, Voting, yes, but not necessarily going voting this through this kind of procedure. We get confused sometimes with what the rules are and right. how to read the ballots. Now, um, so what what we need to do in North Carolina and, and wherever our audience is, is that, you know, do the buddy system. Get your mail in ballots and then sit around the table and go over the instructions together. Because it doesn't it, there is no rule that says when you get the ballot, you got to fill it out alone. You, what you can do is if you don't understand the instructions, you can call up the local uh, Democratic headquarters. You can call up the local Republican headquarters, whoever you're voting for. You can call them up and uh, they will help you walk you through how to fill out the ballot to make sure it's filled out correctly. But don't ever think that you're alone, especially not this year, because there, there's so much riding on it. And there's so much interest so far that you don't want to leave it to chance. And so and first, let me just say right now, um, over 3 million ballots have already been cast nationwide. Now, I know that's a small thing, but I just want you to know people are voting in multiple states, voting early and um, and bringing their friends. Now, that's piece one. Piece two, and this is the, the really pernicious piece, and because uh, the Republicans have a history of voter uh, suppression. And they do that mm-hmm. by saying, well, you know, um, uh, making the rules complicated. Like in North Carolina, like in New York, you only have to sign your signature. You get your ballot, you fill it out, you put it in the envelope, and then you sign your signature and you date it and you send it back in. In North Carolina, you got to sign it and have somebody witness it. Yeah, yeah. That's a step. And so sometimes, you know, people miss that step and they don't they don't get that part. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, but that's just one more barrier to doing. Now that doesn't happen in New York, but it does happen in North Carolina. Now in other places, like in Pennsylvania, they have where you write in, you get your mail in ballot, but it comes back with two envelopes. So now you have three pieces of paper. You have a ballot, you have uh, and two envelopes. You've got to fill out the ballot, fold it up, put it in the first envelope, seal that one, sign that one. Then you got to take that envelope with the ballot and stick it in the second envelope, seal that, and then sign it and send it in. Because in Pennsylvania, what was happening was that people were just taking the ballot, filling it out and sticking it in the return envelope, not sticking it in that intermediate envelope. And then sending it in. So, so far, 80,000 ballots in Pennsylvania have been bounced because of that. Because of that one thing. That's right. And that's something that the Republican legislature stuck in. And so that's a different form of uh, of voter suppression. Now, look, historically, and I, you know, I, I want to talk frankly, and, and, and I, I'm, oh, yeah. not, I'm not really worried because it's historical fact. Uh, this, these kinds of shenanigans are no different than a poll tax. Yeah, that's no right. The literacy test. No jelly beans. That, that's exact. That's exactly right. I mean, it, it's all that stuff. And it's not exclusive to the South, although it was most prominent in the South after uh, the Civil War and Jim Crow uh, law and stuff of that nature. But it happens in the North, like Pennsylvania. And it happened and they're fighting it out right now across the nation. So while the campaign has been going on, they've been making a lot of noise. It's like, as you know, from New York City, it's like three card Monty. Yeah. You know, they're showing you one card and you're looking for that king. They got two other things and they're shuffling the cards around. Yep, well, yep. across the nation, they have there have been a uh there have been a ton of laws changed regarding uh the voting procedures. And there have been a number and there are a number of lawsuits that are making their way up to the Supreme Court about what ballots can be counted. And just hang on a sec, what ballots can be counted, what ballots can't be counted, what procedures are correct, which ones are not, which is why and we're, then I'm going to come back and answer one of the questions. Yeah, yeah, I was going to tell you. Yeah, yeah get on them. Yeah, yeah I saw that. Which is why uh, all those voting cases will eventually may they may eventually decide which votes get counted, which ones don't in the various states, but it'll get decided by the Supreme Court, 
which is yeah. why the Republicans are moving to try to move so fast to confirm this uh, Supreme Court nominee, yeah. Judge, Judge Barrett. So and before the election takes place, because then they've got a six three majority on the Supreme Court. So you see, it works both ways. It's like three card Monty. You got Trump out here waving one card. Everybody's distracted and upset. And then you got the Supreme Court card going over there on the side. And then you got all these changes to the voting laws. Yeah. What what everybody needs to know is right now. There is if, if you don't understand when you get your ballot or you're confused in any way, shape or form. Call a buddy. Call a buddy. And, you know, just think of it as, you know, uh, phone a friend from, you remember what that show was? Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Right, phone, right, right. Right, call right, 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 right. So, Bill, but let me ask you, why is it different um, in every state? Because each state has its own sovereign authority to, uh, and authority under the Tenth Amendment to uh, make up the laws regarding their own internal election laws. I mean, the election is not a federal election. It's for federal office, but essentially it's 50 different states plus uh, Puerto Rico, Guam, and a couple of territories. So each sovereign subgroup has the authority to govern their things. That's why the law on speeding in North Carolina is different than the law on speeding in New York. Same yeah. thing. Each one gets to and, and some of those things I understand because every state is not designed to function like every other state. And I get that. I mean, I wouldn't want I wouldn't expect people in say like, you know, Montana or Iowa or Midwestern states to function like say Detroit, California, New York. And and that all I get and I'm and I'm totally with that. Believe me, I'm a free thinker, free speech. I don't care if people have guns, but you know, I'm a Democrat. Um obviously I'm a liberal. Um, you know, I believe in abortion, women's rights, and all this other mm-hmm. stuff. My my thing is at, 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 when when these things were put in place, it seems to me we've and I say this a lot about biblical texts, and I'm not religious at all. But it seems to me we've outgrown some of these things, you know. Right. But you had another gentleman. He asked, um, "Can those people actually go revote the people uh, that the ballots got kicked back to?" Actually, that's that's an excellent question because this is the point. Uh, what they should do is uh, what people can do is they can call to see if they, check on their mail in ballots, see if they were received, and if they were had been received and they were marked void, then yes, they can go and they can vote again, or they can revote because that ca- ballot is cast aside as void, which means they still have the right to vote, so they can go down and vote. So in the case of the ballot, it, see, and here's another trick. And that is the election board, the boards of elections in the various counties, they control the stuff, but they are under no obligation to tell you. So, Zach, you 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 vote by mail. It comes to me. I say, oh, no, no witness. And I toss it. And then you're thinking, okay, well, Bill, if it was bad, why don't you give me a call? Let me know my thing was bad. Yeah, Exactly. I know. But but the law says I don't have to do that. So I get your ballot. I'm like, "Eh," and I just toss it. I don't tell you. And then you don't know any better. But any reasonable person would say. Hey, listen, if my if my ballot was bad, you ought to call me. But here's the thing. This has been going on ever since the Voting Rights Act was passed in 1965. That was supposed to get rid of all of this stuff, and it did. But then in the last 20 or 30 years, 40 years, actually it would be 40, 49 years, uh, doing my math quickly, um, they, uh, they've uh they been chipping away at it piece by piece. So, for example, in Wisconsin, you need a voter ID. Okay, well, you need an ID, a state ID. And at for a while there, they were like only people with Wisconsin driver's licenses could vote because they were trying to exclude uh, the University of Wisconsin. You know, they got 100,000 students. And, and the question was, do they live there or not? And the answer was, yeah, they do. And so they got to use the college ID, but that was not without a fight. So the Republicans have been slowly... Uh, nipping away and tucking away at all these things for all these years in all 50 states. That's why the rules are so messed up. But yes, the short answer is call, check on your ballot. If it was rejected, you can vote. Just make sure you do it before November 3rd. And if you get your ballot first, call a friend. Don't do it alone. Yeah, so y'all heard it, man. Um, again, here we are hanging out on Funk Music with Zach, a little special show today with my man Bill Tresvant, um, Washington Insider, worked on the Obama campaign, worked around D.C., knows the ropes in and out. So this is why I wanted to bring on a professional. You know, I only do a professional. This man's a professional at what he does. Um, he's an attorney, plus what I see now, accomplished musician as well. So you know what I'm saying? I'm finding out a lot as as you guys are. Thank you for tuning in with us and hanging out with us today on oh, Funk no, my Music. Pleasure. With no, yeah, honor. man. I love you. Thank you. And and you know, there's a there 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 are 
things that we ain't going to go to just yet because okay. now's not the time. But um, in your your experience, um, have you ever been witness to this thing that we're in that that we can't seem to shake and we're getting further and further apart you know okay all right do you mean uh i, I mean i mean oh, like like if society or just politics just 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 in general of like the three card i i, I want to say it's the perfect storm we had yeah. we had this stuff up in the white house that's right. Um, for three years, we had the the resurgence of the Black Lives Matter movement, the violence, and we had a deadly disease. That's mm-hmm. what I call the perfect storm. Mm-hmm. And um, have you ever experienced anything like this? No, and actually, uh, you raise an excellent point because I can tell you this: that um, it's like on every every single time you turn around. I mean, it is something that you never would have seen in our lives. And here, I'll just try your life and my life. And I'll just sort of speak to the audience. You know, I was born in 1968, so I'm 52. Um, but in my lifetime, I've seen uh, two impeachments, uh, an election go to the Supreme Court, the Constitution being questioned. Now we have a president who may not leave office. And so we're talking military violence, okay? Um, a pandemic, like, you know, like you see on Hollywood, this kind of like flesh eating virus going around, an economy, the whole world on shutdown, everybody wearing masks, and then finally the protests, rightfully so. Yeah, the- exactly. I mean, yeah. after, after 450 years, it's like enough is enough, but it's, I have never seen that in my life. And, you know, I remember when I was a kid and um, I would read, you know, uh, the various books politics or history or whatever it was. And I just thought, wow, what would that be like? And you take any one of them. What would it be like to have a contested presidential election? Okay. And so I saw it in 2000 and I was like, that was bad, right? And now for the second time in my life, a contested presidential election that may involve the military. Now, how you yeah. doing? I mean, I can tell you for me, that that is like uh, the Buffalo Bills winning a game in the last you know fifteen seconds of the game. It's a heart attack special. I've never seen it, and more importantly, Zach, you know what I can offer? Every single one is a once in a generation kind of event, and it's serious. Yes, 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 yes. yes. On its own. Like, yes, right, right, right. Alone. Yeah. That's yeah. serious. Yeah. Like, you're messing around, like you know, serious. You know, straighten up. I mean, there's a time to shuck and jive and screw around and, you know, hang out with your buddies. But then there's a time to straighten up and fly right. And pandemic is serious. Fine. Yes. A, a recession slash depression. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, okay. And then this political stuff is serious. Yes. And then Black Lives Matter. Serious. Across the board. Yep. Black yep. Lives Matter, what I mean by that is this. The killings have to stop, and I don't know why people can't see that. Yeah. And, 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 and. Look, there was a time when I was born in 68, 68, America was being ripped apart by the same stuff, so I'm a child. Exactly. You know, um, and then, you know, uh, I'm of mixed race. So, you know, when I was growing up, they were still trying to figure out whether black and white kids could go to the same school, let alone a brown kid. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, I, and, and get believe me, I get it because because again, I grew up, um, and I'm a little bit older than you, but m- my father's his whole family was from Georgia, mm-hmm. Alabama. Why so every you- summer we left New York and went down south. It was mm-hmm. just it was just going to happen that way, and mm-hmm. and I learned to see both sides of it. Believe me, I went out in the fields with with um, corch with snakes and chop cotton with my cousins. Mm-hmm. I know what it's like to see like ten cotton trucks going by with black people sitting on there just to try to make two, three dollars a day with a truckload full of cotton. I've mm-hmm. actually done it. My father wanted me to experience all of that. I slept in the log house without light. I bathed in the tin tub. I went to the bathroom in the outhouse. I understand how that life was not too long ago and still is the mentality. Mm-hmm. And when I see 
that the gentleman, Jimmy Martin, that's following us on the thread. And thank you, sir, for hanging mm-hmm. out with us today. Um, you know, he's bringing up some very good points. The things that the man said about divisiveness and stand back and things of that nature. I don't like to repeat negative energy, but it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It is. It is. And let, let me just say, this, you know, my a couple of things. And uh, a lot of people don't know this. I, I you know, I've, uh, I'm generally reserved unless I'm with, uh, you know, my really, really close friends. Yeah, same, same. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, you're right, Jimmy. Uh, my, my, my family's from Columbia, South Carolina. My father. Uh, my last name uh, is uh, a gift from the plantation that they worked on. So it's funny. Everybody thinks I'm French. I'm not. Uh, it's just Tresmont, Tresmont Plantation. Now, my grandfather, uh, who, who I'm named after, William Tresmont, was a, a, a Baptist minister or a minister in AME in South Carolina. My good cousin, Bruce Tresmont, is still down there. Shout okay. out to Bruce. If anybody <laughs> Bruce down in Columbia, South Carolina, you let him know that his cousin is talking trash about <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, and so I'll come down there. You know, it's a, it's a, it's an entirely different mindset. Yeah, yeah. However, yeah. however this is what I do want to ask our because I want to make this participatory. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Listen, I want to ask our audience down south. Do you know that if every person of color voted, you would have black representatives? All across the South by sheer population numbers alone. That's what everybody's scared about in Georgia. Yeah, yeah. That's what Abrams proved in the last gubernatorial election. Yeah. You know, was messed up again on these voting procedures that you raised at the beginning. And yeah. that's why I call a friend. But I'm sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to. No, no, nah, nah, man. Hey, we kick it like this. Here we are live hanging out with Dr. Bill Tresvan, um, my good buddy, my friend, my new brother from another mothership, live on Funk Me with Zach on IBM.tv. Um, you know, this man is all around the world for the funk. So the reason why, I, again, I wanted to have you is because there are things that, you know, we need to chop up as we get closer. So, you know, music, business. Um, anything that people do, whether they work at a grocery store, whether they're the mailman, whether they're an attorney, whatever it is, this is the time to raise your voice. And I wanted you on my show because Mm -hmm. you're a specialist, you're a professional at this. And let me ask you something. Um, The gentleman brought up a very good question, one of our our comments, and he he was saying we're supposed to be the United States. Uh So do you ever think in your lifetime you, me, my kids will actually see a United States. Actually, I do. I do. And and I'll tell you why. I mean, it's an interesting question because, you know, one, I'm optimistic. But two, it's one of these things. It's like uh, if you think about it, it's a war of attrition. And you know why? Because when I was younger, you know, I was the oddball. OK, but now and I and I used to tell my friends, I say, you wait one day, your kids are going to your, your your kids well, they're going to have kids that look like me. They do. My daughter's a biracial. So, yes, biracial on, on, humans, we're so, here. They're here. So, so my white friends growing up, they didn't think that or whatever. And I was like, watch, your kids are going to be, you know, listening to rap. Uh, my black friends, they yeah, they were like, nah, 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 nah. I was like, yeah, well, you, you just wait. I'll just wait. Yeah, rap, yeah. Rap, yeah. Thing, blah, 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 blah. There's a little Billy Tresvant stuff. But now, you know what's happening? I walk down the street and I'm like, yeah. And I give a special nod. You know, yeah, me too. Me too. Know, Zach, me too. You know, you know what I don't want to talk. You just walk down the street. You see, you don't even have to know him. You I saw it at the protest I went to. I went to five over the yeah. past um, few months before my surgery, and I saw the Rainbow Coalition that was out there. People really do want to get together. It's only yeah. the knuckleheads on both sides or whatever, you yeah, know. Exactly. And, and some things are justified, but most things are not. No, Zach, they're fighting for their lives. Because And here, n- now let me back it up with statistics. Mm-hmm. The state of California is minority. I lost your volume. Sorry. The, the state of California is majority minority now, just in terms of the population. There are more people that are non-white in the state of California than there are people that are white. And uh, they, the, the projections are that in 15 years, by 2035, the majority of the United States is going to be uh, people of color. And so that could be people that are biracial, triracial, five racial. I don't care how many racials. OK, but then you'll have the, the one racials. But all across the board. And at that point, at that point, Zach, 
everybody's going to be looking at things differently. And those that are fighting right now, and I'm not going to give a voice to the, because I believe in, like you do, I'm not going to give voice to that group that uh, was, uh, you know, cited at the Tuesday's debate. But yeah. that group, that group is going to grow smaller and smaller. And the smaller it grows, the more violent it becomes because yeah. it's just like a cornered animal. And You're we right have, about that, and, yeah. yeah. And we have to understand that. But more importantly... Good point. But, but, but more importantly, the way to get that is for us voting now, because I can tell you why. Had my grandfather not done what he did during his lifetime... Agreed. Then my then my father would not have turned around and left South Carolina, came up to D.C., went to Howard, and then, my, out, yep. and then turned around and married a white woman in 1966, 65. Yeah. Yeah. And when it was still against the law, you know, miscegenation laws, which made me, you know, unrecognizable under the courts. Because yeah. miscegenation laws weren't even uh, ruled uh, unconstitutional by the Supreme Court until 1975. Loving I, know. I know. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? 1975. America so East is point, young. That's right. but my point is, is that, and to our audience, voting matters because voting changes. And we are on the upswing and it's a march and we're taking, a, it's taken a little while, but every single time you vote that you can each two years and then every four years for the presidential, what ends up happening is that we change it piece by piece. And then one day we're going to wake up and it's going to be like, oh, and then we'll have the votes. And we'll be like, oh, and then we'll start passing laws and then things will be different. Because I got to tell you, BLM has changed things. George Floyd changed things. Yeah. Breonna Taylor changed. changed. They are. The, one of the gentlemen brought up that um, we need fair laws. One of the gentlemen on fair. And I didn't mean to cut you off, but you're no, right. And, and, he, and I wanted to get his point in there because the fair and, and this leads to my point, my question for you. Fair laws and, and all of that stuff that we know. Um, you know, are are important to those that have been oppressed. Not everyone has really been oppressed like other people. That's Some right. people feel they may have been oppressed. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have a lot of white friends, you know, black friends, Latino friends. It don't really matter. But I tell them, you know, and, and I don't try to be smart alecky about it. I just tell them in my New York way, well, listen, I never had someone of Irish descent or Italian descent come up and say, hey, Zach, I want you to march with me because I'm being killed in the street. You know right. what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. what I the way I take from it, and I agree that you know all lives matter and all that stuff, and I ain't getting into all of that. But mm-hmm. what what I what I'm saying is that the people that have been oppressed, Native Americans, Afro Americans, Latino Americans, you know, Chinese Americans, Japanese Americans, all all of that layer that's holding up everything else. We need to attend to that first. And that speaks to your point. I'm not saying ignore the other stuff. I'm not saying anything about that. I'm just saying, you know, today on this show right now, you know, we're talking about voting. And if we take all of those votes, like you said, and stack them up and put them together, we could change things. Which leads to my question. Why do you think we're struggling with the Latino vote? Okay, this is first of all the, the Latino vote uh, or the Latinx vote is not necessarily monolithic. You right. Have, you have to under- explain that to the audience. Okay. okay, and what I mean by that is that um, they take it very seriously. And I'll, I'll try it this way. Um, at least, like in the black community, it makes a difference. If somebody's like, "I'm representing Baltimore," okay, somebody's like, "I'm Detroit." Yeah, we're all uh, you know African Americans, but where you're from is kind of like, "Hey, I'm from New York. I'm from L.A." It, there's a, it's the same, but slight yeah. yeah. differences are important. Now, the same thing is true in the uh, in the Latin has Hispanic Latin, uh, Latinx community. Dominicans see themselves as from the Dominican Republic. Yeah, Cubans yeah. See themselves as Cubans, Mexicans, Venezuelans. They so America, and this is and and you know, it's just been uh, beaten into us. We tend to look at them as well. They're just all mm-hmm. Hispanic. Okay, because and and nobody takes the time to think. Hey, well, Hispanic includes Mexico because Mexico has different issues. Because the Spaniards came in and did some stuff to to the Mexicans. Yeah, the Republic. That stuff comes down with slavery and some other stuff and mixed in. And yeah, there were some Spaniards, but there were other. There was Portugal and and other countries involved in that stuff. So each one of them uh, have a bond. So we're looking at them as one. 
rather than looking at them as each one has a separate, a separate set of grievances. So good point. When, yep. When we say, how come uh, the Lat- Latinos are having such a tough time with getting together? Well, different reasons. Cubans uh, historically have been more uh, Republican because they figured that the Republicans were anti-communist and hence anti-Castro because they hate Castro. So yeah, that's yeah, yeah. But then we go to other uh, Latin Americans and they're like, they remember uh, Che Guevara and they remember that Bobby Kenny was down with with them. Right, and, right, right. You know, the farm workers and the protests and all that other stuff. And so they are like solidly democratic. I think what's going on now is they're beginning to realize, I think it's two things right now. I think um, first, all of the president's immigration, I mean, it's, it's just been an, a, a flat out assault on uh, the Hispanic community across the board because the current immigration policies don't care if you're from the Dominican Republic or you're from Mexico or you're from Venezuela or you're from uh, Honduras or uh, Ecuador. They don't care. They're just like, you're Hispanic and we're throwing you out. And or all those kids that came in under DACA that are protected under DACA, they're trying to get rid of all of them, too. And so they just see them as one lump sum. So on the one hand, they're scared. Because they don't know how, and they've historically been, if you guys just leave us alone, we'll do our work, we'll send our kids to school, and then our next generation, which is a story of the immigrant dream. Yeah. Everyone except for African Americans, because we came here involuntarily. However, the point is, is that um, they're scared right now, but now the point is so serious for them. With DACA, with this immigration reform, path to citizenship, uh, that, that, and you know the ability to get health care now. And without being arrested, because look, you know how we say driving while black, or living while black, or just being while black, whatever. Walking, it is. talking, <laughs> speaking. That's right. <laughs> Brother bird watching in New York City. Okay. Right, right, right. Bird watching. I mean, no. Nah, thank God he's bird watching. But the thing is, uh, with them, it, it's now at the point where they are suffering the same kind of uh, issues because they're getting pulled over while being Hispanic. And they're getting because and if they don't have their license on them or, or whatever, they're getting thrown in jail and held and almost deported because and they're U.S. citizens. So they're facing the same things. And now the hope is that it's finally getting through, that they see that we have the common thing. And that's why I think that Black Lives Matter is just a touchstone, because, you know, I just do want to say this, Zach, because, listen, our, our community really does have a significant prominence. And it's not a lot of people, you know, shoo, shoo. But I can tell you when our community leads, the world follows. Yeah. When uh, at our third, fourth, five, fifth bite at the apple back in the 60s during the civil rights. Uh, and I'm not really worried about what people are going to say, although I, I know some people are going to you know, uh, get mad. But listen, that opened the door then for, uh, you know, the, the feminist movement that opened the door for the, you know, gay rights and uh, uh, gay, lesbian, uh, transgender uh, rights movement. It, it opened the door for other people, other aggrieved groups. That's right. Say. That's right. That's right. And, and, and I'm, right. Not, I'm not, I'm not uh, dismissing any of them, but I'm saying that we came first. Yeah. It, this yeah. Time around. But it was like our fifth, uh, fifth shot. Totally. It totally. And you know, and you know, what's funny. It, it, and I'm going I'm to bring Mark on, um, you yeah. know, Mark, you can pop in, but um, you know, it, the lady, and I want to give homage to her, Helen Reddy, she just passed away this week. I am woman, hear me roar. And it just reminded me of that. I remember doing that in the 60s, you know, mm-hmm. watching all this stuff happen as a 10-year-old kid. Um, you know, I was alive when Kennedy got shot. They sent us home when I was in second grade. I was alive to see Bobby Kennedy live on TV get shot right there while I was watching the convention when Rosie Greer grabbed the guy um, from, right. from, the, from the Rams. You know, I was alive to see that, you know, and, and, and I've lived through, we, we all have lived through Republicans and Democrats. So really, as long as we get what we're trying to get, it shouldn't matter if everybody up there is for all people. And that's my point. Um, Mark, why don't you jump in with us, man? Because I have a question to ask you. Um, here we are, my producer, Mark Lee. I'm with How Dr. Bill Tresvan. Um, we're kicking it today on IBM.TV, Funk Music with Zach. And please don't forget to check out our sponsors. You know, go to um, Lynn Shepard, you know, Dollar Store, and, and hit that green button because uh, we support our sponsors here at IBM.TV. Today, my audience, I want you guys to understand, yes, it was about the music, and we'll be ending with the Bootsy Collins video too, but it's about getting – Quality information from mm-hmm. Dr. Bill Tresvant, which I knew he had. Mark, early voting, North Carolina starts October 15th. 
What are you going to tell these people to get them out to vote? Hey, it's very important that they get out to vote because this is a critical election. I mean, let's be real honest about this. If we do not vote for the um, candidate of what I think is of the people right now, then we are putting a lot of things in jeopardy. I mean, think about this. If you are voting in a certain direction and everything, I think that you are personally voting for like bigotry and a lot of other things. So that is my attitude about this. So I definitely am going to tell folks that they need to get out and vote right now. I would urge them to vote Democratic and things along that line. That's just what I feel. I am definitely a registered Democrat and that's where I'm at in my mind and everything. But just get out and vote in general. I know that there's some folks that may disagree with me in that sense. They may have reasons that they want to vote for the Republican nominee and things of that nature. But I would urge people to get out and vote and definitely uh, do what they need to do. I heard y'all talking in the back earlier. I have heard tales of people that have not had things witnessed here in North Carolina. So I would urge folks to get out there, vote, do make sure you have the witness here if you're going to do the mail-in voting. So definitely make sure that you're following all those rules that they are asking you to follow. It is very important for this election. I don't know how Dr. Tresvant feels about this, but I would say that this is probably in my lifetime. And I was born um, actually in between y'all, because like I said, I know that- um, I'm the old man, huh? Yes, that's all right. <laughs> but you, that's all right. But I was born in 1962. And I do know that in my mind, with the exception of maybe the Kennedy election, and I was very young at that time, this is probably the most critical election that we have ever faced. That is what I would call it. I would call it the most critical election of our lifetime. So that's where I think and everything I would urge, I would actually argue and Dr. Tresban, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. I think that in terms of critical elections, probably the one, like I mentioned before, Kennedy and maybe the Obama election when we had our first African-American president were the ones that have been most critical in our lifetime. So what are your thoughts on that? Would you agree that this is one of our most critical elections of ever. I, I was going to definitely ask him that about that early mm -hmm. voting. How do you feel about the early voting, doctor, and also response to Mark's question? Okay, first to respond to Mark's question. Um, I agree 100%. Uh, Kennedy in 60, um, and had, it, it, with one exception, had uh, RFK not been um, assassinated, um, then that would have been one of those signature moments that would have changed the country's direction. Because just think about it, we wouldn't have had Watergate. We probably would have ended Vietnam early. Lives would have been different. And the whole course of everything, you wouldn't have had a Jimmy Carter, wouldn't have had a, a Reagan. Um, but then you're right. The, uh, the other one of significance, Barack Obama, because finally that, you know, it, it just sent a message. Now it didn't, it didn't quell everything, but what it did do is it said, Hey, if it's been done once, then it can be done a whole bunch of different ways because now we've seen it. Now we know that when we get together, we can move on. And it's not, and, and it, I, I want to remind, you know, uh, and I'll get to early voting in a second, but I just want to remind everybody of Jesse Jackson's speech in 1984. Now for our audience that uh, did not see it, I suggest they go to uh, YouTube and they look up um, uh, Jesse Jackson's 1984 uh, convention speech. It's called, uh, well, you can probably uh, look it up under your patch is not big enough. And I don't know if you guys remember, but here I'll do a little piece of it. And that is uh, essentially what he was describing was that when you make a quilt, each one of us comes with a patch. Mm -hmm. But our patch, actually, I'm going to do him. You ready? Do him. Go. Listen, when your mama was making a blanket, she grabbed everybody in the neighborhood. And everybody came with their pieces. They had a patch, but that patch was not big enough. Not big enough to provide a blanket. But what she did, <laughs> she took your patch and my patch and her patch and put them together, sold them together like a quilt and made a blanket. And with that quilt, we were stronger. And with that quilt, we were better. But when we vote, when we put together a coalition, remember, and this is quoting from him, Students with student loan debt, you are right, but your patch is not big enough. Mm -hmm. Women and pay equity, you are right, but your patch is not big enough. Brothers and sisters of oppression, you are right, but your patch is not big enough. What we need to do 
like my grandmama did, sew our patches together and create that quilt, that, that garment of destiny. I say they go back. Now, I, I, that's a poor impression of destiny. Well, no, but I, that's, that's deep because you're absolutely right. Because as we come together, united, we stand, divided, we fall. That's which right. is one of the songs on my Nappy Head Funk Army new CD, right? And that's coming out, y'all, in 2021. So make sure you stay up on that. Right. Um, and, and you're right, because here we are, right? Because on this panel, we have all different people that work for IBM.TV, all different people around the world watching. Mm-hmm. Everybody is following our lead. This is the thing that I take from it. My daughters are 12 and 16. Um, they're biracial. You know, my youngest daughter identifies herself as a lesbian, and I'm not ashamed to say that. I support her and everybody else that's living a different lifestyle with all my heart. I ride or die, take a bullet for my daughter. So so here we are in this climate that some people don't believe, say what we believe in. And that's cool. I always tell people, listen, I'm not against you because you voted a certain way. I said, I just want my patch. <laughs> I just want my patch <laughs> to fit in, you know, to be like your thing. And that yeah. that's it. That's and you I'm glad you said that. And I'm gonna use that analogy. Mark, when we were talking earlier off air and we were talking about um I was having Dr. Bill on at the last minute, we were both excited because um you actually told me about this gentleman. Mm. So just tell me really quick how you met Bill and how Bill met you. Tell the audience. Well, like I said, I met Bill through actually this platform and everything that we're on, IBM.TV and everything. And I was just amazed at the energy that he had and the fact of all that he has done politically and things of that nature. I know that he's worked with a couple of national campaigns. I know that he's also done some runs for political office. And I was actually teasing him about that at one point because I just am amazed that folks will even step into that uh, arena and things of that nature. So I was teasing him about that. And that's how we met. And as far as I'm concerned, like I said, Zach, um, I got to meet you here in Durham through the musical community. And I met Bill through the IBM.TV community. But as far as I'm concerned, both of y'all, and I heard you introduce him that way, are my brothers from another mother. So definitely that is the way I feel about both of y'all. Because like I said, we are definitely uh, unified and unified in a lot of different ways. We are also all not just politically active, because I consider myself politically active as well, and activism uh, kind of vibe. But we're also sports fans, because I know I'll go over there to you, uh, Bill, and kick a little bit about what's going on in football <laughs> and things of that nature. He's and, a Vikings uh, fan. Oh, <laughs> No, 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 hang on, hang on. Uh, right now, Mark Lee can't really say a whole much because uh, the Minnesota Vikings. How they, how they doing, Mark? Yeah, he's Vikings. <laughs> Not doing good at all. Not doing good at all. Okay. The horns go down with the Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> See, I but know. I will go down with I them. Know. I will go no, down okay, with okay. them. I am a true and loyal fan. Right. No, Yo, no, Bill, no. I, I got to ask you though, and, and and this is something that I I make I want to make sure I get this question in. When you were coming up, and I know you've done many different things, but what prompted you to really sink your feet into the political world that we know as D.C.? What was your main light that guided you to try to help other people through the political process? Um, uh, well, I, I can tell you a, a, a couple of things. First. Yes, please. Uh, uh, one was my mother. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know, my parents were divorced. Uh, you know, by the time I was five, but uh, she was a uh, you, everybody. I, maybe our audience, the younger audience, won't understand this, but times were different back in. Yeah, they were. The so you know, my sister was born in seventy three, and, and my parents got divorced in seventy uh, uh, seventy three. So my mother was a white woman with three biracial kids that society called black. So here was a white woman raising three black kids in uh, Washington D.C. And then D.C. was an entirely different scene. And Virginia, conservative, was an entirely different scene. Yeah, it is. All yeah. that other stuff. And so the, the, the society was really crazy. And we just come off the assassination. And then you had Watergate and you had Nixon. And it was just it was just wild. Uh, she moved us out to San Francisco. But it, it, she always fought. And the one thing she said was, you know, I don't care, you know, what people call you, what they think, uh, how you do stuff, as long as, one, you do your best. And, Bill, you know. Just stick up for what you think. Now, I got to tell you that 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 ended up, you know, I I, I got into a lot of fights in schools because of the schools that I went to and the color I was. 
Um, and so uh, invariably, uh, we well, before she passed, we look back on it and we laugh. But invariably, she'd be getting a call from the headmaster's office and say, uh, can you come? And she'd have to leave work and come. And she'd do two things. I'd be sitting outside the hall when she came walking down the hall. And she'd do two things. She'd look at me and she'd say, were you right? And I was like, yeah, she's, I'll handle this. I'm like, okay. And I just sat there like a kid because I don't know because I'd been in a fight. It had been like, whatever. She'd go in there and then she'd argue with them and then mm-hmm. uh, come out. Mm-hmm. And then uh, it'd be like, Bill, you have to write an apology letter. Okay, I'll write an apology letter. But what ended up happening uh, in the, the most serious case, which is the last time, uh, the other kid got thrown out of school. Right, right. So my mother was like, it doesn't matter. And, you know, I was a small kid. I was, uh, you know, I was only five foot one when I graduated high school. Now, you know wow. how tall five foot one is. Yeah. That's, like, that's like this, you know. Yeah. And so, uh, so I had to fight for everything. But she was like, why don't you always fight and make sure you're right? And then when as I got older, it became one of these things. When, mm-hmm. you, when you walk down the street, you see people getting done wrong. Yeah. And you say, that's not right. You know, and then uh, I excelled, you know, in debate and politics is like the ultimate game. Mm-hmm. And it was the ultimate game that I had skills for. Now, just like some people, they have the gift and the skill for basketball. They have the gift and the skill for football or musical instruments, whatever they got the gift for, then they've got that. And then they see their path. And so I didn't have the gifts for all that stuff, even though we all think we do when we're younger. Mm -hmm. Uh, I did find out I had a gift for this. And then I realized, as uh, my mother taught me, and she was an activist and where she was coming from, that it really mattered. It mattered who sat in the chair. Yeah. And and it mattered. And more importantly, it mattered how you get the votes to get the right person sitting in the chair. And then I learned, hey, you could be the guy talking to the person sitting in the chair. And sometimes that was a whole lot more fun. Yeah. Yeah. You could be behind the scenes doing a whole bunch of stuff. And so then it just became like, I don't know. I mean, it's it's the same. It was your calling. It was your passion, bro. Yeah, I can see it. It's your passion. And then it could have been my grandfather, who was a minister for his entire life, you know. And then, um, you know, as I learned and grew older, you know, it's on both sides of the family. And believe me, I see all the stuff on your wall back there, and I've read your history and bio. I know all the things that you've done. This man, for y'all out there in the audience that y'all don't know, this man has done so much stuff to try. Like he said, make things right, make things better. And we need more people like Dr. Bill Tresvet in the world who just understands the simplicity of love. And and that's what this show is about. That's what IBM is about. That's what all my funk family is about. That's what we try to promote. Yes, we all going to have bad days, good days, et cetera. Right. But it's about love. And I wanted to ask Mark really fast a similar thing. Mark, you've lived down south all your life here. You were yeah. born here. But Mark is is relatively way more progressive than anybody I ever met here and has a, a thinking man's mind. He's a thinker, mm-hmm. deep thinker. That's why I like Mark. Uh, and Mark, to ask you this question, from the time you were younger until now, what prompted changes in the South that you see have been positive? Because so many things here have been negative, and I don't like to always bang on the South. But Mark, you can tell the audience, like the things that you've seen, say from the time you were born till now, that got better politically. Well, one thing I've seen here in the South, and I think that uh, Bill might agree with me as well, is that we're seeing more of our young folks actually come back and actually be very much actively engaged. And yes, I think we did see that when I was a child of the 60s. So definitely I would argue that my parents who were in their 20s at that time were definitely very much active. But now I'm seeing more of the children of the uh, era that are being active as well. And I think a lot of that is the way that they were raised because I was uh, raised by parents like Bill Tresvant that were talking to me about political activity at a very young age. And they're even passing that on to the next generation. I don't have any kids, but I do have two nephews. And I can tell you that my dad, their granddad, is not afraid to talk to them about politics. And my younger brother also is not afraid to talk to them about politics as well. So they are um, 12 and um, 11 now. So they are of that age where they're starting to think even about political things and of that nature. So I am seeing our millennials and our Generation X and a lot of those folks that are actually becoming quite active. So that's one of the things that I have seen changed here in the South. And I would compare it 
to what we saw with our young people of the 60s from what I've read in the history book. So I would yeah, yeah, it, yeah. say that it's very you, similar you know, to that kind of era. You know, and Zach and Mark um, and, and for the larger audience, just to point out how real this change is, uh, Jamie Harrison is tied with Lindsey Graham in South Carolina. Yeah. Now, think about it. Now, my family's from South Carolina, and they're still down there, and Tresvant's all over the place, and you name it, and stuff like that. I mean, down there, I'm just another one of them. Up here, I'm Trez, so I don't go down there. Um, but you have a Democrat in a Republican state, a black Democrat in a Republican state on the verge of overturn of ups, upsetting Lindsey Graham, who sits in Strom Thurmond's seat. Now, you take a strong uh, black or, you know, people of color vote in South Carolina, along with progressive whites in South Carolina, we will have the first Democratic elected official from South Carolina since the Reconstruction Age. Amen. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Yes. That's, see, how, real this is. that's, that's yes. how real this is in, in, in what, less than 29 days. Yeah. We have a new uh, Democratic senator. And that yeah, would be yeah. powerful. And, and I wanted to say something very important. Bill, um, I wanted to ask you, can can you stick around for like another five minutes or so, ten minutes? Because no, no, no. I wanna I wanna run this video, Bootsy the Power to One, which ties into my show. Um, I want to keep Mark on and we're gonna bring on our other producers, Kim and Ann Kit. And um, I believe today um my good friend Dr. Tawana Anthony, my sister from another mister, is here too. So, you know, and we're gonna continue this round table because I think we, we have something. Dr. Twana Anthony. I said my sister from another mister. But right. but 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 I think we have something very special going on here today. And I would like to invite everybody to join us, all the producers, to come on in. After we run this video, The Power of the One, we're going to continue this because the vibe is right. It's all positive. And I know Bill, Mark, and everybody else, we got to get this information out. Here on IBM.TV, we have an obligation. We have the platform. And most importantly, we got the love of humanity, which brings us all together. So people out there in the audience, hang tight. Watch this video, Boosty Power of the One. We're going to come back with our roundtable, and we're going to continue this discussion because it's hot right here on Funk Music with Zach, y'all. <laughs> I love it. I get goose pimples yeah. when we do our stuff. I do. I love, actually, I love this song. I love it. Yo, it's tight. It's tight. I, I want to put it on my LinkedIn. Hey, you're my uh, friend of mine. Mine.
Power of the One, Boosie Collins. Check it out. His birthday bash, October 23rd. It is the very essence of all that is or ever was. That includes you and all you do. Ticket prices vary. You can get tickets as low as $10. Um, get the $30 package or the $60 package. The Power of the One. Go to clubfunketeers.com, which I you can contact me. I'm a Club Funketeer ambassador, BootsyCollins.com. Also, mad shouts out to Next Exit, dropping their new music out. My man down there, Mike Gideon. Brown and his family and my man Otis Hawk down there. Also, thank you, Donna, and thank you, Afterglow. You can see a toast to the boogie. Um, they got me some new swag. And last but not least, my boy Kevin Harrington, my brother, um, just dropped a new single by K-A-H. X Kevin Harrington experiment featuring this amazing saxophonist Roy Richardson Jr. Um, so y'all go ahead and check that out. Hit my site. Look for Kevin's site. Again, thank you for everybody hanging out with us today. We had an extremely special, important guest that I needed to get on as we continue our little roundtable talking about voting and things of that nature. Dr. Bill Tresvant, White House correspondent, deep inside, hanging out with me, my producer, Mark Lee, the man behind the glass on his shows on Monday night, IBM. Check it out. Also, Mark does the juke joint. So you can go to his page and find that out too. We got a lot of stuff popping. I got the energy flowing. I'm blown up. The full moon was in Aries and I'm an Aries. So you know I'm hyped. Um, and doctor, again, thank you. Oh, no. Um, oh, thank and we're going to continue this because, um, and thank you for hanging out with us. And we're going to continue this because it's very important. Yeah. As we go forward, hey, Kim's in the house. What's up, sweetheart? Love you. Hey, Miss guys. you. What's up? What's up? What's I up? What's up? Been stopped. You guys have got me. It's rocking. juiced, right? It's juiced, right? It's juiced. It's juiced. Like juice. That power juice already. It's yeah. juiced. Right, right, right. The energy is <laughs> juiced, man. It's juiced. You can feel it. You can feel it. And this is what uh, IBM is all about. This is like what IBM is all about. Thank you. That's a question for uh, Dr. Tresvon and everything. And I want you to be able to get that question in and everything. So I need you to get that question. Uh, but before you get to I just got to make one statement. Bill, I hate to tell you this, but you got two Vikings in the house now because I also know that even though we're not doing well, Kim is a Vikings fan <laughs> as well. So just want to let you know there are two Vikings in the house now also. So but I'm turning it over to Zach. So well, Zach I, I, I got purple friend. on. Kim told me once I look good in purple, so I make sure I wear purple. Right? I, 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 I remember. 
Yeah. Yeah. Bill and, and Kim, you can jump in too. Um, yeah. We were talking about just, it doesn't matter who you vote for. We just got to get people to understand how important it is. And and Bill and Kim, both of y'all can answer this. Why do you think now people are still hesitant to understand the process? Because we can't change things. And Kim always says this on a local level until we understand the process of how to get laws changed. As a lawyer and Kim, as a person that's in business and all the great things that you do, how would you guys go about just today trying to fix this electoral college mess? That's my question. That's my question. Oh, that's a big one. Bill, I'm going to defer to you first. But... Well, I, that, that, okay, that's unfair, but, uh, you know, fine, Kimberly. I, I don't think I won't remember. <laughs> hey, Bill okay. takes care of me. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, simply, what, what our audience needs to know is this, is that there is a uh, campaign out there already to change the Electoral College uh, system. Essentially, the principle is this, is that if enough states sign on to say, to pledge that um, they will cast their Electoral College votes for whoever wins the popular election, uh, then if enough states do that, enough states that would carry uh, the majority of the Electoral College uh, votes, that would be 270 states representing up to 270 of the electoral uh, college votes, then we would already have an automatic uh, popular vote. Now, the good news is that uh, 15 states have already done it, representing over 200 electoral college votes. 15 states have already passed laws in their state, including like California, saying we agree that once the number reaches 270 out of all of the states, doesn't matter which ones, as long as you get to 270, that we will cast our votes for whoever wins the popular vote, even if our state didn't vote for that person. So if it's a Republican and they're a Democrat and stuff like that. So that, that is one avenue. Another avenue is to amend the Constitution. Now, that takes um, a two-thirds vote uh, by the uh, House and the Senate. And then they have to send that out to the state. And then two thirds of the state have to ratify that in order to change the amendment. But that's the only way we can get rid of it. Kim, you're a woman that gets things done. So in your opinion, and you're a brilliant woman, um, tell me, and, and we, you and I talk about this privately a lot, as we try to make change as little as they may be, what is the best way to go about it? If you were talking to your audience, Kim, about this, because we have to change this. What would you say? I would say the power is in the voice of the people. And you've been doing it, getting out there and letting your voice be heard. But now you have to take that next step. Right. So there's there's a thing that I've learned this year. It's called learn it, do it and teach it. All right. We we can't just learn and do. We're going to have to teach each other. We're going to have to join hands. Right. And unite a little bit stronger, but we're going to have to go there together and make that change. So we've got our voices being united. We we need to get our statements in place. You know, like when you get your branding going and you get your uh, elevator pitch. Well, that's what we need united. OK, we need our elevator pitch united. So you got your brand, you know, Black Lives Matter. OK, and you want to go in there and you want to be the change now, right? And actually, we're, we're, we're building a channel called Be the Change. I don't know if you guys know that. Mm. But um, so we have to unite together and go and make these policies happen. And it's not going to happen with just one person doing it. One person in the past has always done it, the, you know, little things. But we can't rely on one person anymore. OK, it's a lot of work. Um, you know, as Bill stated, it takes a lot of votes. Uh, you got to get out there and talk to every senator to get them on your side. I have only seen one bill in my my lifetime. And I'm sure there was more. Um, but I personally have only seen one bill go through where it had a unanimous vote on it. And it was the bill for um, uh, violence against victims. And uh, it, it got a unanimous, uh, you know, everyone just voted on it real quick. That's what you want with this. And the problem is, is that some are saying, yeah, 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 I hear you. Or, you know, but don't just get the policy written. Make sure it's got enforcement. So a lot of times they go, oh, let's just oil the squeaky reel. And we'll just write something and pass something. But there's no enforcement in there. And that's the biggest problem that most of these bills have had 
in the past when you see them just go through is that they don't have steps of uh, procedures and policies, protocols and enforcement. Am I right, Bill? No, you're you're absolutely 100 percent right. Kimberly. What I'm seeing is it's, it's a very meticulous, slow process. They say the wheels of justice grind slow, but we have to somehow and this is just my personal opinion as a people to coming together because we're all human beings. We're all different entities, human beings, spiritual lovers of life. Or that's why we're all together on this panel. The creator brought us all together for a common cause. The four of us, the four million of us must go out and effect this change. And and what, I, what I'm understanding is that how it actually works, because I don't know politics. Mm-hmm. I just know what I learn. How it actually works is the combination of voices putting mm-hmm. down yes. what they need to be heard and then taking it to that next level, which what Kim is speaking about. So, Mark, how would we here in Durham, our little small area, if we were going to try to affect change, um, who would you say, and you know some of the people, that we would be able to take some of these voices to? Well, there's a number of folks here locally that we can take our voices to. I'm actually glad to say that we have a very, in my mind, progressive political system here in Durham. And there are a lot of people here that I'm actually proud to call friends that are also involved and engaged in the political process. So, like, I've known Jillian Johnson, our mayor pro tem, for a number of years, as well as our current mayor, Steve Shul. So I do know that they are what I consider progressives and things of that nature. So they are one of those kind of political folks. And I know that that's not always the case, but there are some political folks that actually we'll listen to what folks bring to them. And that's what I like about the city of Durham is that we have a number of leaders that are actually willing to listen to what folks have to say. So I consider Durham to be a very progressive city. And that's just two of the folks that I mentioned. And then there's also Mark Anthony Middleton and a number of others. So definitely I would reach out to the city council. I would reach out to a number of other folks. And I do want to bring in another guest as well, because I did see that we've got a voice of youth also, because, you know, we've got a voice of youth here with, uh, Humara and everything. I probably mispronounced that name. So if I Amira. did, please, Amira, Amira, how you doing, so please Amira? Correct me and Hi, everything. So how are definitely, you? she is doing some great things here on the network. She is a, as I recall, a single mother, and definitely has been involved in a number of things. She is in that. Um, not quite millennial category, but whatever that category is, it's after that, but definitely not a baby. I really don't so. even know what generation I am, what my generation is called. I'm 45. So Welcome. I have, I have no idea what that generation is. The generation X is it? You're, 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 you're close to like a baby boomer almost. Cause I'm a boomer. <laughs> I'm a boomer. <laughs> you're close. You're not there yet. But Kim, you had something you wanted to jump in with. I saw you. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, uh, you know what, you were talking about Durham, and one of my favorite uh, senators is Senator Floyd McKissick. Yes. And he just resigned this year, well, which mm-hmm. is heartbreaking to me, but because he um, supported my invention huge. Like, he is a big supporter of anti-violence, and, but he's a big voice. I, do you know him, Mark? I do know Floyd McKissick, and I can actually try to get him on one of our shows because I've known him for I, a number of years. And actually, we have well, had um, I, I person that took over uh, his seat, if I remember correctly. And I'm getting ready to double check because there's our, a couple of seats that were filled. But I believe that, if I remember correctly, Zach Hawkins took over that seat. And Zach is a fellow Zach. So we got Zach here. And right. I want to say that Zach Hawkins took over that seat that Floyd held. But I'm going to double check that right now to make sure that I'm giving y'all correct information in that sense. But I know that Zach Hawkins is also involved in the, the political front. But Let's remember that and everything. Team because he is this like you know, just unless he, you know, he resigned for medical reasons. He is such a just powerful, inspirational but voice. But when you talk to him, he's just so quiet and calm. But when he gets on stage, it's like this light turns on. And um, and I, I, I've got his business card somewhere. He signed a letter for me. He literally signed this beautiful letter for me. Um, but let's get him on. Let's do it. I, Make I it think- happen. And Humera, we we were just sitting here kicking it on the tail end of my show about, you know, just trying to get the positive energy out. I had Dr. Bill Tresden on my show earlier, Funk Music with Zach, amazing, you know, political insider. And for Bill and for Humera, um, you know, when you guys see 
the, the, the climate that we're in, and we're talking about get out to vote, the strength to get out to vote. Why do you think so many people are still not getting the message as far as um, not so much um, going physically to do it, but it seems to me everybody still had their minds made up. You know, but why do you think that is? Why do you think in America we're just right now so divisive? Yumera, what do you think, sweetheart? Well, I think because in some of the elections, um, the candidates that won the popular vote still didn't win the election. So people are getting, um, they're getting like, I mean, they're discouraged. They're like, why should we go vote if it, if even if we voted and they got the popular vote, they still didn't win. It's just very confusing with the electoral college. People, right, that, the yep. average American does not understand the electoral college. I mean, they should have like a course on this is what this means. We just talking about that, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, yeah. we call it a little bit of a, 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 a what I call a quick. Um, our level course from Dr. Bill earlier today. And, you know, a lot of people just don't understand why this, if they get this new, um, I guess that you call it a law or policy for the electoral vote can be so important because it's like you said, why bother go vote if my vote doesn't count? If, so it's the people's voice that should matter. And that's, that's the problem. Our voice is suppressed. Okay. The, the laws to vote suppress us, completely suppress us. I mean, when you tell me 80,000 ballots got suppressed and, and, and purged because they, the person didn't put it in the right envelope. I mean, come on. What is wrong? If the, the ballot made it, run the freaking ballot through the machine, idiot. You know, well, from, from my personal experience, I just um, I just got an absentee ballot for West Virginia. And when I was applying online to get the ballot, um, I don't have my voter registration card, but it said I had to have the exact signature that I had on my voter registration card. And I used to sign my name, my full name, like my full first, middle, last. But then the last couple of years, I just started signing my initials. So I, I mean, I really couldn't remember what my exact signature was, but I did my whole signature. And it, it worked, so I did get my ballot. But like little things like that, I mean, it just they make it very difficult. Like they just make it. I mean, of course, they don't want any voter fraud, and I totally understand that. But if we can pay, like if we can send our taxes, and like we get our, we get like very sensitive information through the mail. I'm sure there's a way they can do it with elections. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bill, I mean, what do you think, Bill? Well, I mean, I, I think a couple of things. I think uh, one. Uh, Humera, you're correct, it, and the signature thing really screws people up because they compare the signatures and they will throw out a ballot if the signature isn't mm -hmm. the same. And you're right, many people just forget how they sign it for you know the election, so that's important. And um, and Kimberly, you're right, the eighty thousand ballots. I mean, the, the 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 bright light in that and the silver lining is that now people know in Pennsylvania, so there's this big uproar, and one those eighty thousand people can go and and. Uh, vote again uh, if they find out that their ballot was cast. But two, it raised everybody's awareness about the double envelope in the situation with um, uh, with uh, Pennsylvania. However, um, I think, uh, Humera, in order to, you know, to, to address kind of the excellent point that you made earlier about people getting frustrated, um, I think that's a misnomer because particularly in the South, and I just kind of want to hit on this again, that uh, they say, well, you know, I'm a Democrat or whatever, and I'm in the South and it's always Republican. Well, people are proving that that's not true. And the last go round two years ago, it came within a whisker of Georgia having a, a black Democratic governor, female governor. And in South Carolina, you're having a, a, a real exciting race with Harrison and uh, and Graham. And the point there is, is that that is all based on turnout. And here is a newsflash for our audience and for all of you. We were waiting to see what the, uh, what the results of the, uh, the debate on Tuesday was. Well, the first polls came out today and the uh, NBC Wall Street Journal polls now have Biden up by 14 points, which is almost insurmountable. And 14 points on, at the uh, national level starts to suggest an electoral college landslide, somewhere of the uh, like 350 and up electoral college votes. But that means places like North Carolina and Florida and possibly even Texas. So you see, you're right. In all of those states, people are discouraged. Oh, I'm in Texas. My vote won't count. Well, it does if you show up. And yeah, there are going to be hurdles. But yeah, just think about the hurdles when people couldn't vote. Yeah. Women couldn't vote until 1920. Yeah. You know, so which is insane. 
It's like, that's insane. That's right. Literally 100 years <laughs> our fingers to the bones, but they wouldn't give us a voice to vote. Right. I mean, and so, and right. fight. Right. And, so, and hang on. Here, I'll just go with some hot button issues that I think were just, you know, not a particular political side, but uh, women make less than men and have been doing that since they ever started working. That's a reason to vote. Okay. Yeah. For women. People without health care who now have health care. That's a reason to vote. If you've got pre-existing conditions and things of that nature, fine. You want to see reform with the uh, with uh, police and uh, community affairs? That's a reason to vote now, this time around. Even if you, you got to do it once or twice and figure out all the loopholes, call a buddy, have a meeting, sit down, figure out all the rules and get it done. But those are all reasons to vote. More important, you want a better economy? And Kimberly, I know that we're going to, Get to the issue of taxes tomorrow. I mean, uh, Nick is working on that. But yeah, Donald Trump paid seven hundred and fifty dollars in taxes for two years, and that's it. That's a reason to vote. I Do mean, you know why? Because he is smarter than you, stupid Americans. Because if you stupid Americans can't figure out how he uses the tax laws, it is your fault. But my my question to him. No, no, no. Actually, that's what Donald Trump said at the uh, debate. Just so everybody knows. Yeah, he said that in the debate. I just feel going. Did I hear that right? Oh my God, he just called the Americans too right. stupid. Well, he said so many crazy things in that debate. It wasn't, uh, it was just kind of insane and everything. By the way, just to make some clarities of some things that were said earlier, um, Floyd McKissick actually retired because he was uh, going to be appointed to the Utilities Commission. So that's why he left the office as he was going to go into the Utilities Commission. Mm-hmm. And that's where he's going to be hopefully making his difference. So he is still active in everything. And Natalie Murdoch actually took over his seat and is actually in that office. And I have had the pleasure of talking to her on one of the uh, podcasts. I don't think it was one of ours yet, but I will talk to her about being on that. And Zach Hawkins, the other Zach that's in politics, is actually in Mickey Mashaw's seat. Bill, the question I've got for you, and I'd like to hear from others as well, is that I oftentimes hear people talk about, and sometimes the folks on one side of the table may say it more than others, about the economy. And they try to paint it as if we're in a great economy. I know that my personal economy is not all that great. I know that Zach's personal economy is not all that great. And I can imagine that Humera's isn't all that great either as a single mother. And even uh, Kimberly, as an entrepreneur, is struggling. So I'm trying to figure out exactly where are they getting these figures from and how can we get people to understand that these figures might be inflated or not put in a correct form. So I'd love to hear what your thoughts are, because I'm oftentimes hearing people try to say that we're in a economic boom, unemployment figures are down, all this other kind of stuff. And I'm going like, but I know a lot of folks that are furloughed. Okay. Well, first of all, we're in a recession and there's no way around it because growth is, and that's uh, as the economists define it. But more importantly, uh, the the disconnect is this, is that everybody keeps saying, oh, the stock market, this, the stock market, that. Well, first, the stock market doesn't represent uh, what's going on on Main Street. Yep. And most people are not invested in the stock market. So seeing the stock market goes up means nothing to the average person. What you have to look at is you have to look at the unemployment numbers and you have to look at the job growth. And this is where the economy is right now. Since the pandemic, well, from uh, the job gains from the eight years of Obama, Biden, first they had to turn it around, then they had steady job growth. And then that job growth continued into the early uh, part of the administration for uh, Trump. And then beginning with the pandemic, that entire time we created 22 million jobs. Now, since March, February, March of this year, we lost, we lost 22 million. Now, in the meantime, we've gained back about 10 million, which is less than half of the 22 that we've lost. Now, we would have to uh, gain a million jobs a month. And at best, we would be in a recovery by the end of 2021. So right now, we're in a recession. Now, most people, this is the old definition of the uh, recession and depression. A recession is when somebody else loses their job. That's what Wall Street is thinking about Main Street right now. Well, Main Street lost their job, so maybe America's in a depression. But a depression or a recession. But a depression is when you lose your job. So, you know, right now what's happening is that more and more people are losing their jobs. The airlines are going, the banks are starting to cut right now in the latest reports, and uh, there's no end in sight. And we can't even get a handle on this pandemic right now. 
So the, the, the difference is the way you're looking at things. When you hear the stock market is up, ask yourself, am I in the stock market? Because for me, the answer is no. Now, if you're not in the stock market, then what do you care about the stock market? Right? Yep. The question becomes, okay, well, then what's unemployment and what are the job numbers? And if the job numbers are down and unemployment is high, then that's the economy that you're living in. If you're living in another economy where you're invested in the stock market, then if the stock market goes up, you're having a great time. Yeah, I'd like to hear from Humera. What do you think, sweet? Humera? Well, I actually live with my parents. They helped me raise my son. My dad's a psychiatrist. And what saved, what's, <laughs> thank you. Um, what really helped him during this whole pandemic is that he is able to do telemedicine. So he's able to, you know, see his patients, even at home, do his rounds. And that really helped him because there are several physicians also suffering, everybody's suffering. Yeah, I live in West Virginia, but I go to North Carolina every other weekend because my son's father lives outside of Charlotte. And I know in Charlotte, my friends are hurting. A lot of them are in the music industry yeah. where they put on shows, they're DJs, the promoters, they're, I mean, they're, I mean, what are they doing now? Slowly it's starting to get back on track. Like they're having more shows and, but a lot of people are hurting and that's just the reality of it. I mean, I don't know, like, like Kimberly, I was reading some of the things she wrote about how the unemployment count is incorrect because of how they count it. But I mean, mm-hmm. from my personal experience, people are hurting. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. And to Mary, just really quickly, I was curious. Um, I've seen a number of things where they're talking about that vote between 25 and 50. That was kind of the Bernie factor last election and everything. So among your friends, are you hearing a lot of folks that are disenfranchised and are not voting? And if so, how are you trying to encourage them to get out and vote? Because that was a block that rarely hurt, even though she won the popular vote, but lost the electoral college. A lot of folks, when they do the analysis, they say that that is a vote that really hurt in the last election with um, the uh, race between Trump and Hillary. So I was wondering about your reaction and what you're hearing from your friends and peers. Well, I have friends ranging, ranging from the 20s all the way to the 60s. And, you know, and what I found is that the climate has totally changed the last four years. Like my friends, the younger friends, they are like out there protesting. They want to go vote. They're like, we have to do this. We're the generation that's going to change this world and this and that. I think even the older generation, even both, both Trump supporters and Biden supporters, even Trump supporters are very passionate about re-voting, voting for him again. I mean, like I live in West Virginia in a very like, it's, I live in a very like, um, it's like a resort area. So a lot, there's a lot of Trump supporters here and they're very passionate about their candidate. But even in Charlotte, like in that area, there were a lot of Bernie supporters. And when he did not win the Democratic nomination, they did become, they were upset. Like they were very upset. But then they realized at the end of the day that they, that for them, they want to vote for someone who's not Trump. So I know people on both ends of the spectrum and they're both very passionate. So I think, I mean, everybody I've account, encountered is passionate this this election. Yeah, it should be. Uh, you know, it's weird. Here we are all sitting together just chilling with all this beautiful positive energy and love, right? Representing all facets of the world. Why can't other people just do that? What, mm-hmm. is, what do you think it is? There's, got to, there's always like Occam's razor. The simplest thing is the most popular, you know, probable thing. Doctor, okay. jump in. Tell us. Okay. No, 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 I, no, no. This is a complete uh, pass the ball, and I'm going to pass it over to Kimberly. And I'm just going to say one word. It's money. Kimberly, take it. Oh, <laughs> could not have said that any better. And I want to round back to the unemployment talk because the way that they generally count the unemployment oh, is okay. based it on uh, how many people get unemployment checks. So, and, and if you notice over the past few years, unemployment got decreased to six months. So the actual count of people who are unemployed don't, it's not real people. So don't sit there and listen to them. Oh, you know, unemployment's down. <laughs> yeah. Just the, the amount of checks they write. So, um, so consider that when you're looking at the economy, when you look at the money, um, again, you look at the market bell every day, right? I do look at that, whether I'm in the market, stock market or not. 
I look at that to where my economy is going. I also look at mortgage rates. Okay. If you look at mortgage rates, you can kind of figure out how the economy is going in, in your area. Look at banking interest rates. All of these things, the way they adjust up or down will determine how your community is going to be going. And so, you know, you have to look at history to understand this. And this is a whole class in itself. But I do recommend if you want to learn more about a lot of these things and understand um, the arguments that you're hearing um, at the debates, watch tomorrow's Economic uh, Monday with right. uh, the taxes because you're going to have some subject matter experts on there explaining a lot of things that none of you really knew. Actually, Trump should watch him because his statement <laughs> was very ignorant. I'm going to say this right now. His statement was ignorant because when he said that Americans are really stupid for not using the same tax laws he uses, they can't. OK, the tax laws are not made for the hard working middle class. If he was a real president up there doing what he said he was going to do for the hard working middle class, he would have changed that law so that it was fair for everyone. But he didn't. He did it so he could use it. You heard him say that yeah, because, yeah. I it because Obama wrote it for me. He, this was, Obama wrote it for me <laughs> and I used it and that guy got fired. So you listen to every word that's being said. This is a challenge. This is what I tell people. We're out here. We're all talking. We're giving in our opinions. A lot of times, I hear people give an opinion, and they miss the whole. They miss the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, 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 as a Trump, fan, if I were a Trump fan, I would have been highly insulted at that moment. But nobody heard that. Trump fans didn't hear that. Yeah. And Kim, I what, what, hear that. what time is that tomorrow, Kim? So people know. Oh, what time to tune. 10, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And we're actually still going to run it on one link. Uh, we're going to be changing Economic Mondays. But start tomorrow will be the last day that we're running Economic Mondays on one link. Uh, we've just got so many great things going on that, you know, we're, we're, we're getting more and more channels. I do want to announce a new show. Yes, Amara Wood on Tuesdays. <laughs> where we are connecting Bollywood with Hollywood. And let me tell you why this is great, right? Is that we're going to start inspiring all of these great entertainers and the talk of entertainment so that we can re-empower that industry again. All of you musicians, all of the artists, all of the actors and actresses and and all the elements that make that, that industry great. You know, don't, again, don't forget the artists, right? Uh, but mm -hmm. the musicians, everything that just, and that's what Humira is going to do is start, and she's going to connect Hollywood to Bollywood. Um, there's all my little dance. <laughs> yeah, it sounds great. I just had an idea, and I want to know. This is my like a fusion between the red carpet with like some Indian like gold design, and then my flowers because I love putting flowers in my hair. So that's my little touch right there. So this is my red carpet. <laughs> I love that red carpet, and I just had a great idea. I want to come back to you, Kim, and everything. But my great idea was um, since you're going to be talking to some Bollywood stars and everything, do you think that you can get Zach and some funk music on some of those Bollywood uh, movies? I think that he would love to have that happen because he's always in his area producing music. So I'm uh, pitching that we get Zach to do some Bollywood music. So are you down I'm with that? I'm actually going to have different episodes focusing on different topics. In one episode, I'm definitely going to focus on music. And I'm going to focus on how Bollywood, like maybe tablas and like sitars, like certain sounds have been influenced and incorporated into like Western music. One of my guests who's going to be on my show is one of my friends. He was the former bass guitarist for the Ramones, the legendary mm -hmm. punk, uh, punk rock punk rock group. There's actually a street in New York City named after the lead singer. I know so him, friend, yeah. I know. I, I grew. I was right down the street from where they rehearsed. You're gonna love my garage. friend Dave Newhall. He actually wasn't an original member, but he joined the band later on, and he played with them at that. What is that? The RGBC something? No, RGB CBG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has all these stories. So he, you can be on my guest on the show when he's gonna be on. And then my cousin, he actually was. He's a, a he's an orthopedic surgeon, but he actually had his own band. It was like, an, it was a band that was infused with like electronic music and they won, he was the lead singer, they won the Hollywood Awards for Best Alternative Rock Group. And I'm tr I'm working on getting him to also be on my show. What, like, I mean, I'll have several shows. I'm sure we can. I'll be know, more than happy. He'll be my 
pleasure and my honor to have you on my show. I just friended you on Facebook, so hit me up. Okay, me back. okay, definitely, yeah. 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 <laughs> and let me know. Let me know. I'll be more than happy. But I, just a quick thing uh, before you get to Kim. Sorry, Kim, but I was right down the street from the Ramones where they used to rehearse at in that garage. And they played all over Long Island with Twisted Sister. You definitely have to be on that I, show. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know all about that. But I'm sorry. Go ahead, Kim. No, 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 no. I'm glad we're connecting. Like, isn't this great? What a small world. Like, mm-hmm. but but let, hear me out. Also bring in, I've been asked if you can bring in Nollywood to this, Nigeria. Um, so oh, yeah. Ask, you know, can you know, you guys are doing these two. Can we kind of bring in? I'm like, why not? You know, that's America. Let's unite the world. That's like, I mean, that's my purpose in everything is just to under, spread understanding and um, just you, this world, we're all one. We come from one source and we just, we forget who we are. We come here, we're born with all these labels, like I'm a female, I'm this religion, I'm this, that. I mean, we get so caught up in defending that, that we forget that we all are one. Yep. The reason why I like this is because it's my transparent world. There you go. Uh, okay, we can uh, connect, but we're but it's the transparent globe. That's what I want us to become, where we are one and transparent with each other, so that we can see each other's needs and grow. And you know what, uh, Zach? I think it's cool that you, you've got a connection to Mara Woods. Yeah, right down the street. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, then, you know, this show just always picks me up. And I want that that song, The Power of One. Let's I'll see send it to you. Do the Power of the Vote. That's the power of the vote. Hey, we can run that too. Believe me. I, you know, it's funny because, again, we're sitting here with this beautiful love thing happening. Uh, all of us together. And you can feel the energy. It jumped off the screen. I, I just wanted to say, um, yesterday, Mark was producing Tisha's show, and um, we would, she said what you just said, Kim, on that show. They were talking about the energy. And what you just said, Humera, is so spot on. We're all spiritual beings having mm-hmm. a physical experience. Exactly. And we're not exactly. born to be separated. It's mm-hmm. only our physical appearance, you know? And Kim and I talked about this probably a lot. Doctor, you know, I know you're connected with it. Um, you know, Mark, you're connected with it. You know, nature and everything else. We have to somehow, this is our mission. We're charged with this, whether we know it or not, continue to do what we're doing right now. To all right. the people out there, just know, if you're depressed, you call one of us, we're going to try to talk to you at IBM TV. Uh-huh. If, you got, if you're being abused in any kind of way, um, you know, especially a child, woman, whatever, if you're a woman being abused, whatever, a man being abused, you contact IBM TV. We have things in place that you can call a text or contact. One of us here at the station will get back to you because we have so many great shows that cover all great topics. We are the future. So y'all watching out there, it's just not the show. We are the future. What's happening? Um, You get the truth, you get the real, and you get a bit of everybody, which is what this country united, this world is about. Um, And and getting back to to Bill um, and and Kim and Mark and Humera, you guys are amazing. I'm just so glad to be on this roundtable, you know, while I got the time. But we just had World Peace Day last week, two weeks ago, right? Whenever, did you know, the world was like, hey, here we are. And then all of a sudden, what happened? It went away. It went away. Where did it go? Because it's called Awareness Day, right? So it's just to bring awareness to make people bring their mind. And that's one of the things we talked about. And that's why we are bringing in a a channel. We're talking about it. I shouldn't be telling anyone about it. But it's called Be the Change. Mm -hmm. And part of that is about keeping that awareness going every day, right? Why do we have to stop just on that day? Right. um, and that that's going to, I think, help uh, do that. But that happens all the time. Like a lot of people don't know this October. Well, first off, this October is very special because you have two full moons, yeah. one on the first day, one on the last day. Um, it's very rare. One is the harvest moon. The other is the hunter's moon. So both is something that fulfills the human body. Um, but and then, you know, as you said, the Aries, but it's also Mars. If you look in the sky, yes. Yes. With yes, it's the side of the moon. Yeah. Right? yeah like rubies with a diamond so um all very very beautiful but then also the month of october is awareness for um heart it's awareness for breast cancer and it's a a lot of people don't know this but it's an awareness month for victims of domestic violence Mm -hmm. and so and so these are three three big things in our lives right 
um, that are all happening, but we only, you know, think about them in the month of October. And, and occasionally you'll get the one or two people who that they keep it going, right? Just like anything, right? Um, any movement has those, you know, few people who stand out and just keep that ball going. That's one of the reasons why I've always liked Biden because he never stopped with the mission of stopping victims against uh, violence, never stopped. And that he wrote that bill in 1994. He pushed it. He gets it approved every go round. He makes the minimal changes to it that continues to get people to support it, but they're important changes. And um, he has tried to get some changes pushed through this year, uh, which was very disappointing because the president wouldn't do it. And it was to prevent um, the offenders um, from carrying guns. So you, generally, uh, if the offender is uh, attached to the person like a marriage or a brother, you know, not brother, but attached to the person in some sort of way. But if they're a boyfriend or a stalker, when they write the order, they can still carry a gun. Mm hmm. And we don't know why that is. So we were trying to get the, it was a little loophole that somebody found. So uh, Biden goes back and says, hey, we need to change this. And the president goes, no, we don't. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute. He goes, well, everybody has a right to carry a gun. But no, they don't. I don't think everybody should have a right to carry a gun. I mean, some people don't earn that right. So. Right. Well, I mean, I mean, part of that uh, is illustrative of the simple point that your vote matters now. When you talk about Zach, yeah, Zach, when you talk about, you know, hey, we were all uh, kumbaya a moment ago, um, and that's true. That's what the world can be like. But the question, well, the challenge is that you got to fight to get to that point. You yeah. Gotta fight to get to the point where you've got sensible people in positions of authority who say that, hey, listen, you don't have to fight anymore. But because the ones in, in charge aren't going to, you know, give it up easily. And in some mm -hmm. respects, I mean, that's what Trump is doing. He's just saying it up front. He's like, I'm not, I have no intention of going anywhere and I'm going to continue to make messed up decisions. And I'm not worried about you, not worried about you, not worried about you. And I'm going to push through the Supreme Court nominee just because I can. And I'm going to make sure it's all messed up. And unless you stop me. And so the point is, is that when you go and you vote, then you're putting somebody else in a position where they, where you can relax because you can say, okay, this fight <sighs> and you can take a breath. And then let somebody else come on because they will uh, level the field. And that's why individual votes are important. Phone a friend for some help and do it this time because this is singularly one of the most important elections. Because, I, you know, frankly, I don't know uh, if anybody. It's funny. It's one of these things. Back in 84, uh, when Reagan defeated. Uh, uh, no, I'm sorry. Back in 80, when Reagan defeated Carter, his big. Uh, question was, are you better off America than you were four years ago? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Right. They looked to their left and they looked there and they said no. And then they voted for Reagan. Now, the right. question is, I think this time around, do you think you're going to be better off four years from now with Trump? So you can look to your left, you can look to your right, you can look up, you can down, and then you can decide how you're going to vote. You know, it makes a lot of sense what you're saying, Bill. Um, Bill, one of the questions I was going to ask you is, as far as the Supreme Court nomination, where are we with that? And also, is there anything that we as people, because that's actually a nomination, but is there anything that we as people can do to try to influence what is going on? Because I think that this is probably going to be a very influential Supreme Court judge in terms of the way it sways the elections, or oh, not so much sways the elections, but sways some very important decisions. Because I know that there's even some decisions around Roe versus Wade that are actually, I think, coming onto the Supreme Court very shortly, and that could impact that. And I know that Planned Parenthood is worried even about basic birth control. So I was wondering, in your mind, is there anything that the common man can do in order to sway things and in order to get things uh, changed with the Supreme Court nomination that we're facing right now? Okay, first off, three things. Um, one, a week after the uh, November 3rd, the following week, um, the Republicans are trying to scrap uh, Obamacare again at the Supreme Court level. And if it's scrapped, then that leaves 25 million people out in the cold with no health care almost immediately. And then there's no plan left. So uh, to the common man, you can go and you can vote. Because if you vote and it's the Democratic Senate, then they can replace whatever deficiencies the Supreme Court finds. That's one. Two, uh, with regard to the process, uh, Senator Graham had originally scheduled the hearing to begin on October 12th. That was before two members of the House, uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee, uh, 
uh, got COVID. And so now it's up in the air. So it's, I believe it's Senator Mike Lee from Utah. And then I think there's another senator. And then you got, well, you guys down there in North Carolina, you have uh, uh, Tom Tillis, who is, uh, who's in trouble now um, but with, the, with COVID. So the thing is, is that they uh, are going to try to put off the hearing temporarily, but they're going to push this nomination through. Now, that's to give a status report where we are. Hearings are scheduled for the 12th. They're going to try to uh, vote her out of committee on the 22nd and confirm her by uh, October 30th, conveniently enough on Halloween. There's nothing, because that one's done. If all the Republicans stick together, they can do that. What the common person can do is vote for somebody that they know will support health care. Because you have to assume that the Supreme Court is going to gut Obamacare a week after uh, the election when they when they make their decision and then it's going to go back to congress and the, right now the house is in the hands of the democrats you need the you need the senate in the hands of the democrats and you need the white house in the hands of the democrats yeah. so the common person go and make sure that that happens in their in their areas so they've just got to vote for somebody uh, possibly the democrats that's going to replace whatever the supreme court scraps Y'all heard that, people. Vote, vote, vote. It's important. We say that at IBM.TV all the time. We don't care who you vote for. We just, just know. Vote. Got to vote. Use your voice. Vote. Um, and we talk about that. Mm -hmm. well, and I want to say that West Virginia thing that's very concerning to me when you talk about us pushing the Supreme Court justice this fast. One, is it is this common? Because no. I know this is a lifelong seat like a marriage. Generally, it's a 90-day, you know, check a person, investigate, and interviews. What are they doing different to rush this so fast? Um, it's like well, a shotgun wedding to me. You know? It's like yeah, a it is. Wedding. It is. It is. A shotgun wedding. Um, essentially, uh, they are essentially skipping just about all of the protocols, the research that everybody gets to do, then the televised hearings, so condensing all that stuff. But to put it in perspective, just for our audience, on average, the entire history of the United States Supreme Court, it has taken on average, uh, even with the fastest ones, it's taken an average of 75 days. So that's like uh, two months and a half or whatever it is, uh, from, from the time that they're nominated to the time that they're confirmed. And that's somebody that they, that nobody has an issue with, okay? And there are others that if they have an issue with, it takes longer because that's just the average. In this case, they're talking about from the day that she was nominated to the day that they're looking to confirm her, all of 37 days. Now that cuts the 74 in half. It's never been done before. It's astounding. And it comes on the heels of the Republicans holding open the prior Supreme Court vacancy for an entire year. And that was under Obama when Obama's nomination. So the point here is that, uh, uh, Kimberly, you're correct. It's never been done. It's unheard of. 37 days from nomination to possible confirmation. And you're right. It's a lifetime appointment. And there's absolutely nothing that anybody can do right now. It's just a naked grab for power. Can the people stop it? Right. That's my question. Mm. Can the people stand up and say, no, we don't want to see this happen? Because in all aspects, the government works for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they do. But right now, but right now, the ones who are in charge in the Senate are the Republicans have the majority. And so they're claiming that, hey, we were voted in and we have the right to do it. And Trump is claiming, hey, I was voted in and I have a right to make the appointment. And then the rules in the Senate are, are governed by the uh by the party in power. Right now it's the Republicans, which means they get to make up the rules. Now, there is a, you know, there are some things that Democrats on the Hill are doing, and that is they're reminding their Senate colleagues that, listen, if you guys do this this time, and if and when we win the Senate, um, then, you know, don't expect us to, you know, reach across the aisle and be kind, because this is not how the Senate's supposed to work. This is not what you're supposed to do. But all they can have is to say, uh, all they can say is, listen, we're going to have a long memory on this one. And uh, with th that's why this election is even more important, because if yeah. they take back the Senate, it will change a whole lot of rules. Yeah, um, Roe versus Wade is up for grabs. Yeah. There's so many things, you know. And we're still fighting. Women, you guys are fighting for this stuff. I have two daughters, and, you know, um, I, I, you guys have fought for everything you're still not getting equal pay, like Bill said. You're still not really recognized totally in the power structure like you should be. <laughs> There's not one female billionaire owner in the NFL or sports. You know, things like that, you know, it's 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 such a a hill that we all gotta push, pull each other and push each other up. Um, but 
in my opinion, and it's just again me talking, what we're doing right now here is is so important today because this show is is really educating people and telling them, listen, your vote this time is going to matter. It has to. And there's a bigger, and I ain't getting into the Illuminati. We know that. But there's a bigger thing. But for right now, what we can do, we have to turn out and vote. Bring a friend. If you can't figure out the ballot, Lord knows, get some help with it. Um, You know, here's something that's important in America, around the world, especially America. Stop sending unnecessary junk mail that you can wait on until after the election. You don't need to send Billy's birthday card with the gift card in it. Please just call Billy and say happy birthday, Aunt Judy, whatever, because it slows down the process that's already been tampered with. You know, I asked my mailman the other day, I was like, yo, bro, stop bringing me junk mail. Save your time. Leave it at the post office. He says, no, it's my job. I have to. I said, but isn't that, he told me, he said, you have no idea the coupons, catalogs, this and that. We should suspend all of that until it's the post office. Postmaster General should come out and say, listen, you're not going to get your catalog until after the election. You're not going to get all of this crap because it's unnecessary. You know, I, it goes right from my mailbox to the garbage can. And I thought <laughs> this is slowing down the whole thing for people that can't get out. Now, Mark, October 15th, North Carolina. Boom, early voting. Kim, you know that. Um, Humira, when does early voting start in, in West Virginia? I'm curious. Well, I mean, I got an absentee ballot, ballot, but the thing that was kind of weird is that they said that you can send it up to the day of the election. So then when are they going to count it? Because, you know, on the, that was another thing, because most people are going to be voting by absentee ballots this year. But if they're not even going to count it until who knows when after the election, then... I mean, then they'll declare, they'll say, oh, this is the projected winner. And then everybody will be like, hey, we didn't vote for them. And I mean, I don't know what kind of ruckus it's that's going to cause. And that's not right. They, so this is what I tell people. I was told this years ago, absentee ballots are generally not counted before the, the campaign. I've, I've, a few friends of mine work at the ballot centers. And I go, what do you mean? They go, yeah, they don't count them until after. And I go, well, what's the point well you know if there's a questionable then they'll go ahead and count those they shouldn't project a winner then they should just not say anything if an absentee ballots are coming in they should come in before you they should say come in before and i don't understand why they can't take them and put them in the machine yeah right it's like yeah pac-man pac-man um and I don't understand. I never understood it. You know, who cares that we're knowing the, the count beforehand? Don't let it be shown anywhere, right? Wait until November 4th day. And you can even open up November 4th day. This is the count we're starting with today, just like you do with the, the, the million dollar pop, right? This is how many millions there are in the lottery on this start day. And then you're going to watch the count go up and down all day long. But um, the, the whole system is broke. It, it, it is has- broken. It's not for the minorities. It's not intended for the minorities. It is intended to suppress the minority vote, to suppress the minority voice. And and I'm going to tell you guys, you know, something that bothered me for years. Um, I live way out here in the middle of nowhere country and uh, on, on family land. And my father-in-law died many, many years ago. But for many years, we kept getting a voter card for him, a voter, mm-hmm. uh, you know, this is where you vote. Mm-hmm. And I, and, and, you know, years reg- he, uh, reg- you know, he's registered to vote. And I'm like, he's registering him to vote. One, he had a really weird name. So this is, it made no sense to me. So I would take it up to them and say, you know, I put deceased and mail it back in. They never would get the message. And so then I started carrying it in and go, look, he's deceased. Don't let anybody vote for, you know, on his name. Um, but it would confuse the things, too. They go, oh, you know, well, why are you bringing this now? Why didn't you just mail it in? I go, because... You haven't canceled him. <laughs> right, right. He's still voting. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, you know, we saw that in Chicago and other places historically and all of that. But, Bill, I was wondering if you could talk to our listeners and everything as we get ready to wrap up in a few minutes and everything. But I know that enough enough folks don't vote. I mean, like I said, we're definitely urging people to vote that are registered. Where are we at in terms of registration? Have we exceeded those deadlines? And if not, can you tell folks? Um, how they should register and things of that nature. Because I'm oftentimes amazed at how many folks 
don't vote. Because like I said, there is like a percentage and a vast percentage of the population that doesn't vote that is eligible to vote. So I'd love to hear you talk about that, the importance of voting and actually getting folks registered to vote as well. Okay, uh, I, I will do it quickly. And, and look, this is my hair on fire speech. Okay. Uh, in the NFL, if your quarterback is only completing uh, 49, 50% of his passes, you're benching him because you need somebody that's like 70, 80 and the quarterback rating 100, right? If your shooting percentage in basketball, if you're, you know, if you're under 50% of your free throws, which, you know, Shaquille O'Neal had a problem for a while there at, you're like, <laughs> you got to, you know, you got to do something, right? In the United States, we only have, out of the total eligible voters, we only have a 51% participation rate. Horrible. It's less in, in the primaries. It's down to 30%. Now, here's the point. The point is that we that that rate even at 50 percent is not good enough there are countries where people are still dying to vote one two now in the united states here under various places they made it really really easy to vote now some some states you got to check what your state but you can register uh most of the registration deadlines are ending this month sometime in october like here in dc to actually register you can register up until like i believe the 13th that's one way but in dc you can also register the day you go to vote yeah. So in some states, you can go. So if you go to early vote, you can register then and then vote. And then other states, you can register on the day of the election day. So you can register all the way up and through and until. But you have to check with each state. But the point is this, is that you should – it's like getting a driver's license. Your vote is important. And another reason why the vote is important for people that just don't know, this year it also uh, it, it also influences the census. Now, mm-hmm. nobody thinks of the census is why this is connected, but the census is what the federal government uses to allocate money to the various districts. Yep. So Amen. if you need more money in, in your little uh, district area or community area, you vote because then the more people that live in your area, the more money that's going to come back in that area, all because you vote. You vote, and then the, you, you see the, the person that went shares your values. They're reflected. Of your of your choices, that way you're not in the street. You can get them on the phone. You vote to get more money for your community. You vote so that you're heard. You vote for your kids. You vote for your parents that are sick that need their social security. You vote for your mother and your daughters who, uh, you know, so that they can get uh, rights redressed and uh, close the equal pay gap. You vote for people of color so that they have rights, so that they are tired of being tired of being sick and tired of being tired mm-hmm. about stuff. So you vote. And when you vote, you're voting for the person that's currently detained in ICE. You're voting for the person that's currently in jail who can't vote and is wrongfully convicted. You're voting for the person in West Virginia who is losing out because they don't have a rural hospital because there's not enough Medicare money to go around to pay the doctors. You're voting because you want to get rid of guns in the city. You're voting for better health care in the rural South. You're voting to help uh, fund wildfires in the West. You're voting for, you know, the hurricane aid that goes to disaster relief and all the emergency funding that's in the South with all the hurricanes and the rebuilding and the insurance. That's why you vote. So. Yep. Get your own for politics, Bill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they had run for politics before, and I think Bill right. needs to you run got again. My for 30 <laughs> yeah, I think Bill needs to run again. No Ma, 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 just give me 20 seconds. I think it should be a national holiday, mm-hmm. and in other countries, it's the law that you have to vote, and that's what I was going to say. Mm-hmm. And well, I'm- I think they should pay every person who goes to vote a stimulus check. Because we all need it. And I think that that would influence everyone from 18 to yeah. 118 to get out. And actually, I think there are people 118 now. But I think that uh, it would encourage everyone to get out and vote if they paid us all stimulus check. If we did either do our right in vote or go to vote. I think um, that this is your only freedom of voice yeah. that yeah. you have. And so there should be no complaints from anyone that doesn't vote. Bill, you got my vote, Bill. Yeah, Bill's got my vote, too. Real quick quick question, Bill, um, because I'm actually, Kimberly just raised it and everything. Where are we at with the stimulus checks? I know that a number of folks, myself included, are looking for another one, so I need to know where we are. So where are we at currently with the stimulus checks and the negotiations? Okay, well, the negotiations are ongoing, and the reason why uh, we haven't heard anything yet is because they're quiet, because now they're in a real nitty gritty of the details and they're fighting right now the last major issues are uh how much money is going to go to 
uh, reimburse the states for all the costs with the COVID related things. The parties currently are at uh, the Democrats are at 2.2 trillion. The Republicans are at 1.5 trillion. Uh, they were at a difference of 700 billion. But in the meantime, the president got sick. He's in the hospital. And it Friday in the uh, well, actually Sunday in the Washington Post, uh, he was putting pressure on his team to reach a deal, not only on, on COVID. So he can have something to say to the American people that would include stimulus checks. So it's ongoing. And there is a ray of hope, but they're serious. That's why they're quiet. And they're down to $700 billion. And uh, Nancy Pelosi is optimistic that she's going to get the deal. Steven Mnuchin, Secretary, uh, the Secretary of the Treasury, is being dragged. You know how, like, in the old days when your mother grabbed you out of the scruff of your neck or dragged you kicking and screaming? That's what's going on with Munchen right now. Go ahead, Kimberly. I'm sorry. Oh, just a question. You said the president's in the hospital? <laughs> Yes, the president's in the hospital. Is Mike Pence running the country right now? <laughs> no, Mike Pence is not running the country. Uh, uh, Trump has not handed over power pursuant to the 25th Amendment yet. Uh, but who knows? I thought that once they, he becomes incapacitated, he has to do that. There are only two ways that you can do that under the 25th Amendment. Either Trump himself sent, writes a letter temporarily handing power over to Pence, and Pence says okay, or Pence says, hey, listen, the guy's incapacitated, and he's got to go get a majority of the uh, cabinet. Oh, that will never happen. And they are never going to do that because because the half of them are acting, and so they don't even have the position. Nancy, he won't do that. He's a no. pansy. So. No, he yeah, well, I can't do that at all. This- I know. I know we're going to wrap up, and I've actually got to bring on a couple of the spots of some of the shows, including one that I know me and Kim love big time and everything. But I do going to end with a little bit of a comical moment as well, because one of the things I noticed in that great debate is that according to uh, what was going on. In terms of the fires and everything, all we really need is Smokey Bear. Because Smokey Bear has said that that's all we need because he said that it was all about forest management. And if that's correct, then all we need is Smokey the Bear to solve everything. And I don't agree with that, but that's what the man is, well, now currently of Walter Reed, usually at 1600. That's what he said. That's what I heard. Did you hear that as well? Because he said it was all Smokey Bear. Yeah. I'm for it. I'm for anything that's going to bring us a smile on our face when we are faced with adversity and that we can make the change. Yeah, and- definitely agree with you on that and everything. Definitely. I thought this was a great discussion. Glad to have. As, uh, <laughs> it was on I fire. You say that? I said it was on fire today. Yeah, we were all fired for sure. Great discussion. Glad to have Bill Tresvon join first, Zach, and then keep this conversation going on. If you're not careful, and uh, Zach knows this, I will get you to play that instrument. So you need to stop flashing that, or we're going to get you to play it on the air and all of that. But I'm not going to put you on the spot that way. But I did think about it. I'm sure even Zach had that thought as well. So are you ready to give us a uh, little toot of that horn? Or no, he's like, no, we're not going there at all. So he's not having that in the least bit. Humera, I've seen you pop in a couple of times. I, we've actually seemed to miss each other, but it was great to actually have this conversation. Thank Me you. Too. I have become a big fan of yours. I should let you oh, know that. Thank you. Tune into my show. Bollywood and everything. So I definitely will be joining and checking out your show on Tuesdays. I hope that you'll check out mine what time? as what well. Time? As a matter of fact, time? on Monday, tomorrow, we will have the director of the Full Frame Film Festival join us. So that is a documentary film festival here in Durham, but it is internationally known. And so uh, Deidre Hodge, who runs that festival, will be joining us to talk about how they're doing, what they're doing with uh, the plans for that. I know last year they did it in that virtual space because of COVID. So we're going to find out what the plans are for 2021 and beyond and how they're supporting documentary filmmakers. And then I've got some musicians joining us on the afternoon show and I'm still creating the online dinner party on Wednesday. So we've got all kinds of great guests and all of that. But then later on this afternoon, we're going to have a very great show that I know me and Kim love. And then we've got the show before that at three o'clock, we've got Alexandria May coming on to talk to music and what's going on in her life in there in South Africa. So she'll be talking about that. And I'm sure she'll also bring on guests from Nashville and a number of other places because she is definitely connected to the music community globally and all of that. And then in the uh, afternoon, I uh, know I'll be sitting there chit-chatting away with our other Zach here on the platform, and we'll be talking about talking upstream. So they'll be creating that show and having some great conversations as they create these new TV shows, uh, comedies, and a bunch of other things that they do. You get to see them create it right there 
on the air. And it is just amazing what they do. So like I said, we've got some great shows here on a regular basis. As we get ready to get out of here, I'm going to put on one that also is later on this evening. That is the one that Bill is involved with, and, which and he, is American politics. I just wanted to let people know, Humera's show is at 1 o'clock, right? PM. 1 o'clock on Tuesdays, Eastern Tuesday. Standard Tuesday. Time. Right, yeah, we need to know 1 o'clock yeah. at, on Tuesday. Right. My first episode airs this Tuesday, October right, 6th. Very, so please I, tune in, 1 o'clock yeah. Eastern Standard Time. And I'll be posting thank that as you. well on my page for you, too. That's what I wanted oh, to know. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I got you. You will definitely get the word out on our platforms and everything. Speaking of first-time shows, I believe that earlier last Friday, we had the first episode of Shoot Crazy, and that was a great show. I know I enjoyed watching it. Also, Kimberly enjoyed watching it. So Gwen her and her uh, ladies did a great job of sharing their knowledge and passion of wine and food and all of that. And is it tomorrow that we've got Wynn Charles talking about what it, she's got going on? So I think Wynn's first show is tomorrow. Am I correct in thinking that, Kim? 9 a.m. Monday Win with Win. Uh, Bill probably can give her a better pitch about her. She's a fabulous woman. She actually got, she set her goals. She got 60,000 downloads and is kicking strong, going for what? 400 a week? 400, 400 downloads a day. And she's a, she's a real inspiration, talks to a, a wide variety of people, and is very inspirational, overcoming struggles and doing what she wants. She's an up-and-coming journalist, former teacher, and uh, really smart and funny. And so, but uh, don't underrate her. Win with oh, uh, Win with win. And uh, the most powerful voice for uh, d- uh, disabled people. Um, I love it when she gets on her soapbox about how people need to be reacting towards disabilities. And uh, so just watch her. Mm-hmm. She's inspiring for women, inspiring for dis- disabled people, inspired reading for uh, Black Lives Matter, inspiring mm-hmm. for the minority voice. She is. She's just mm-hmm. I think we will all win if we watch her. So and Bill American Politics tonight. I'm you know, I, I don't even know who it is this time. So I'm going to just beam in and watch. Um because I can watch it on my big screen. I've figured out how to get YouTube to work on my big screen. So okay. I watch, you know, the whole house, we get together uh, and we watch on the big screen uh, American politics. And it's cool. That's, I'm like, that's, that's IBM great. TV on my big screen. IBM TV. <laughs> great. That's a great thing. You want to give us a clue, Bill, as to who you got before I put on the spot about American politics and also talking no, upstream no. because y'all know. It's one of my favorites, or I think it should just be a mystery. We'll let folks watch it. They can catch it then, unless you want to give them a clue. Nope, nope, nope. I'm sending out love. All right. It's time to wrap.
Thank you.